ठीक है तो हम हम स्टार्ट करते हैं हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो वॉट जीपीटी स्टैंड फॉर चैट इज वेरी ऑब्वियस डू यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट जीपीटी स्टैंड फॉर सो इट इज जेनरेटिव प्री ट्रेन ट्रांसफॉर्मर तो हम थोड़ा इसकी बात करेंगे मैं टेक्नोलॉजी ज्यादा ज्यादा टेक्निकल नहीं बनाऊंगा इसको बट जस्ट टू गेट अ कॉन्टेक्स टू इट इज वी वील ट्राई टू लुक एट इट फ्रॉम टू और थ्री डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव सो हैव यू ऑलरेडी सारे थिंकिंग अबाउट हाउ यू कैन यूज इन योर बिजनेस करेंटली और योर न्यू आइडिया इन दैट सेंस कि कैसे इस्तेमाल करना है बस इज देर इन द मार्केट ये एक अच्छी चीज हो सकती है लेकिन कैसे यूज करना है यू आर स्टिल सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्सप्लोरिंग दोस्ट कॉम कर ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है फिर लेट मी लेट मी आर बॉडर सेल्स ऑफ वेट वी आर करेंटली बेसिकली ऑलरेडी देयर कैन यू रीड द स्लाइड इट्स फेवरेट डे सर इट्स बेसिकली यस सर इट्स बेसिकली यहां पे आता है देयर इज अ वीआई कर आता है सो लेट मी मोर डिटेल ऑन दैट बिकॉज़ दैट इज अ बिग वर्ड टुडे एंड इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ आई एम नॉट श्योर हाउ रेलेवेंट इट विल बी टू ऑल द रेस्ट ऑफ यू बट वी we'll discuss that subject because uh, it, it has got several applications which are even uh, sort of being explored today right now so anyone has a deep technical background in this group you have mtech mtech kis subject mein kya hai computer science and engineering kin mein computer science and engineering aap you already are computer science aapka pure technical hai ya aapka dusra marketing hai marketing person so you can at least one of you can relate to some part of the technology and i'm sure you heard this word ki software is eating hardware or the world in any way so the latest buzzword is ai is eating software and even later buzzword is that transform of the eating ai ye aaj theek hai so hype cycle is a very interesting concept It's been around for quite a while koi bhi nayi technology aati hai na ai ko aap nayi kahe ki purani hai wo aapko decide karenge
बट जो रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी के अंदर उसको अपडेट करने का ऐसा मोटिवेशन नहीं आता ना तो इट गेम मी अटल मोटिवेशन टू ट्राई टू अपडेट एंड ये स्लाइड मुझे मिली है जस्ट फ्यू डेज बैक एक आर्क इन्वेस्ट करके एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है यूएस की दैट इज पब्लिश अ बिग रिपोर्ट वो टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोजेक्शन करते रहते हैं सो देट दे कैन कंसिडर वॉट थीम टू इन्वेस्ट ये मुझे बड़ा इट कॉट माई इमेजिनेशन तो इसको एक एक बिफोर वी गो इन टू दिस स्लाइड आई वॉन्ट टेक टू मिनट्स टू एक्सप्लेन दिस स्लाइड लेट मी आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन कैन समन टेल मी वॉट इज द जी डी पी ऑफ इंडिया टूडे एनी वन इन द ग्रुप आई डोंट बिलीव दैट डेट फॉर थ्री ट्रिलियन डॉलर लेट आई कीप इट सिंपल थ्री ट्रिलियन डॉलर एनी वन कैन टेल मी वॉट इज द जी डी पी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज फॉर हंड्रेड ट्रिलियन डॉलर can any 100 100 trillion dollars can anyone tell me which country has the largest gdp in the world yes. i mean where does india stand us yes. yes. yeah correct you are from there and second china china you you tell them you know what where you come you come so us is about 25 trillion roughly china is about 12 15 trillion do you know what is the growth rate we are running at Everyone talks of growth rate these days, five percent, six percent. All the economists, the economic surveys, the budget. Everyone keeps discussing all the time the, the growth rate, the world growth rate. What is it? The world growth rate. India is running at about five to six percent. We used to be eight percent at one time for a big period because of Sankar Reddy came along. So it's a very important <laughs> indicator of how the world is doing in terms of economic terms. This is the first graph, right? तो वर्ल्ड का करीब दो या तीन परसेंट के आसपास रहता है ये जो पहला ग्राफ है ये दिखा रहा है कि टेक्नोलॉजी की वजह से ग्रोथ रेट ये ग्रोथ रेट है लेफ्ट साइड पे जो लेफ्ट कॉलम है और ये थ्रू हिस्ट्री हाउ द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी है सो प्रोग्रेस किया सो इतना लॉक स्केल लॉक स्केल आई एम श्योर यूर अवेयर इज एक्सपोनशियल जब ग्रोथ होता है तो लॉक स्केल पे आने के कितना बढ़ता है उसको तो ये जो ये बहुत छोटे छोटे शब्दों में लिखा हुआ है लेकिन ये साफ देख नहीं रहा है अभी तीन परसेंट है जो पर्पल लाइन है ना ये बात का प्रोजेक्शन है सो व्हाट दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन्वेस्ट आर्ट इन्वेस्ट इज सेइंग इज कि एज पर हिस्टोरिकल ट्रेंड्स द ग्रोथ रेट हैज बीन इंक्रीजिंग क्रॉस द वर्ल्ड टू हिस्ट्री एग्जैक्टली एंड बिकॉज द टेक्नोलॉजिकल प्रोग्रेस This growth rate is expected to go to about 10 percent. ये जो green वाला जो part है, that is the sort of increase that is likely to happen if we normally go as per two to three percent, which is growing currently. Normal तरीके से वो दो तीन percent भी चलता रहेगा. But because of technology changes, it is expected to grow to 10 percent in the next 20 years. एक एल्बिन टॉपर हुआ करते थे आई डोंट नो पावर शिफ्ट का आपने किसी ने एनीवन हैव हर्ड अबाउट दैट सो इट्स इज माय माय इरा ने ही वाज अ प्रोपोनेंट ऑफ द आईडिया कि टेक्नोलॉजी की वजह से द ग्रोथ रेट इज एक्सेलरेटिंग यू बाय द आईडिया दैट द ग्रोथ रेट इज एक्सेलरेटिंग एज वी गो अलोंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी डू यू एग्री विद दैट और यू थिंक इट्स रॉन्ग इट्स इट्स अ फैंसी इट 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 मेक्स सेंस So let me let me put a proposition to the group here. <coughs> the what the report we need here, yeah, there is a lot of work to be done. So the second number is that if we are normal rate of growth, then it will be that in the next 10 years, it will be 130 trillion dollars. So 100 to 130 will be increased in the next 10 years. But they are predicting that because of the technological changes, it can actually go up to 170 trillion. Dollars. So the implications of that are very profound, actually. So if Elvin Thompson is right and the, uh, the this, this sort of acceleration is, is going to happen, then uh, uh, it has very profound implications, at least for your generation. Yeah, we may not be so mind, but your generation is going to severely impacted because of that. So now, a small example, we will discuss this example, and then we will sort of see if there is anything else to be added. Can you guess out of the hundred trillion dollars the world economy is running on? How much is the knowledge worker 
पार्टिसिपेट होता है जैसे एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर हो जाता है सर्विस सेक्टर हो जाता है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हो जाता है नॉलेज वर्कर इज सॉर्ट ऑफ अ कंपोनेंट वर्ड फॉर ऑल सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर्स एंड नॉन नॉलेज वर्कर तो आप लोग सारे शायद काम कर रहे हैं वो सब नॉलेज वर्कर की कैटेगरी में आ जाते हैं तो नॉलेज वर्कर का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द इकोनॉमी इज हाउ मच कैन एनीवन गेस इज अबाउट 1/3 देयर व्हाट ओके 1/3 सो 30 ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स इन द नॉलेज इकोनॉमी I expected half. हाँ लेकिन चलिए जो the consensus is about one third. It doesn't matter whether it's half or it's one third, but it's a very large portion. What we need very large portion. It is. So one proposition is that things like Chat GPT, which we'll end up talking about. I all all of you heard about. Have both of you heard about Chat GPT? Chat GPT. GPT. चलिए ठीक है कोई बात नहीं आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द हाउस इज हर्ड अबाउट इट सो वी टॉक अबाउट इट सो डू यू एग्री विद इन द चैट चैट जीपीटी इज सो रिवॉल्यूशनरी इन इट्स ओन वे दैट इट कैन हेल्प द नॉलेज वर्कर्स टू इंक्रीज देयर प्रोडक्टिविटी मल्टीपल टाइम्स यस सो अगर प्रिंट डॉलर हो जाता है तो कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एआई टेक्नोलॉजी इटसेल्फ टू द इकॉनमी विल बी ह्यूज यस डू यू बाय दैट यस डू इट मेक सेंस आई डू बाय दैट यू डू You don't disagree or agree? No, I agree. You agree? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we <laughs> is a good uh, sort of uh, way to look at it. Let me put another perspective. Has anyone heard of this company called NVIDIA? Yes. yes. You have. So NVIDIA is one of the famous companies that makes. Uh, I'm sure you know the difference between CPU, GPU, TPU. Is that so? Any of you know? CPU, yes. Okay, we'll talk about them on the later. CPU is circuit processing unit. Yes. So, हमारे ज़माने के उससे बेहतर. GPU is what NVIDIA makes, which is graphical processing unit. Okay. And TPU is tensor processing unit, which Google is making. It. So, what this GPU, TPU, CPU story is telling you is that the age of AI is demanding very specialized chips. Mm -hmm. So, we conduct that in the news because of supply chain. कारे बंद ही बंद हो गए हैं और कंप्यूटर बनने बंद हो गए हैं because of supply chain problems. All heard of that. So the amazing thing is that uh, the AI industry is demanding very specialized chips because of certain reasons, which we we'll probably talk about uh, for two minutes as we go along. Nvidia is the leader of making AI chips today. So just because of Chat Chat GPT ki jo hype, jo GPT ki hype created, Jensen Huang makes this claim. Which is also very interesting in the context of what we are discussing. That in the last ten years, AI has been increasing at the rate of four times every year. It's quadrupling four times a day. So since I've been tracking AI, I don't have the exact data for proving that, but I end up believing it. And Moore's law, you know, who Intel, Intel, the founder there, or one of the earliest people. Part of the system that we are working with. He used to say that every two years it is double the the, the power of hardware or the uh, semiconductor and uh, revolution of transistors and start coming in and start increasing in terms of density and the chips started becoming more and more powerful. So if that was two times every two, every two years, this is quadrupling every year. Which means it's going. It has already been a million times the time. If you talk about bombs, we talk about it. The last ten years has become a million times what it was about the ten years back. That is unbelievable. That kind of growth is very rarely seen anything in technology. You have to take certain things to understand the world that we are in. So it just sort of sets the context of where we are. We are sort of facing a revolution which is unfolding before our eyes. ठीक है, I think we have had enough of this. अच्छा, ये थोड़ा just in the context of what we just discussed, let me give you some talking and moving. ये Tesla का chip है. Tesla, I am sure everyone has heard. I can't imagine no anyone not hearing about Tesla. Elon Musk is sort of a superstar of the tech world, very big news. ये उसकी chip है जो उसमें जाती है. Tesla ने दो chips बनाई हैं. ठीक है. Very interesting. It's a self-driving car, and also, 
and uh, that is a specialized AI chip only for processing AI. Uh, so, uh, uh, self-driving cars, and uh, they are using AI in a very, very big way. I'm sure you're aware of that. And uh, he has these chips which he has made. They have made their own special chips for running their own AI programs. So, he puts in the car. वो कार से निकाल करके डॉक्टर को डालने वाला है इसकी जाओ। अब तो वो फ्रेम में भी लगने सुना है वो कर। अब वो भी कर रहा है। और दूसरी चीज़ उसने बनाई है सुपर कंप्यूटर ने जो ट्रेन करता है इसको। ये मेकिंग इन होम सुपर कंप्यूटर। इट विल ट्रेन द एआई फॉर पुटिंग इन कार। तो ये उसकी चिप्स फुल सेट ड्राइविंग का जो कंप्यूटर है उसमें दो बैक टू बैक दो दो चिप्स लगे हुए हैं दिख रहे हैं आप उसको इधर स्पेशलाइज्ड एआई चिप्स विच प्रोसेस इस एआई लॉर्डिंग्स अब वो उसी उसी एफएसटी कंप्यूटर से रोबोट बना रहा है जो उसने लास्ट अपनी पब्लिक अनाउंसमेंट में कहा था बिकॉज़ ही � ये गूगल का जो हमने टीपीयू की बात करी थी ना टेंसर प्रॉब्लम्स तो गूगल इन मेड इस रोज़ स्पेशलाइज्ड चिप क्योंकि उसे रन दे डेटा सेंटर्स बिकॉज़ दे डू अ लॉट ऑफ एआई वर्क तो दे हैव मेड दे रोज़ स्पेशल चिप टू रन दे एंड टेंसर फ्लोस का अपना सॉफ्टवेयर है व्हिच आई नॉट शर्ट the Apple AI chip is, who uses an Apple phone here? There are three of you who use an Apple phone. Which version do you use? iPhone 13. Sorry? Uh, you are asking me the model? Uh, iPhone 13. 13. Now the model is going to be done. 15 is yet to come. I, I think it's come already. I know about 15. I'm not sure if India is going to come. 15 is going to be launched here. Yeah. Anyway, this is, I'm not sure, 13 में आपके फोन में ये वाला ये वाला चिप है कि नहीं, but 14 में भाई है ना इसमें भी है। आपके पास post face recognition है? Yes. So that is AI you're aware of that. Yes. So ये एक special चिप होनी तो do all the kind of work किया। So you are already using AI as a hype cycle के तो रहा नहीं ना, फिर ये तो आप आपके फोन पे आ गया। Yes. Actually, these days we are using it passively. Uh, once we will start using it actively, I mean we can understand that yes. I agree. So, uh, but you are using it. Yes. Are you using I it agree. 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 AI is spreading across the industry, across the world in ways that you sometimes encounter very actively as you said and sometimes encounter it passively as you said. Okay, now let's see the applications of this. We have already touched upon some things, but we just have a quick look at that. The most powerful language that we have used in this application is the widespread use that is computer vision. These are uh, each area of application of AI is sort of can be is, although AI is a horizontal technology which can be used in anything, but at the same time certain fields have progressed very rapidly because of certain special characteristics of AI and computer vision of one of them. The next is natural language processing, uh, which whether you I'm sure you use natural language processing or you, uh, which is whether active or passive, you must have used it. Translate the work as they have. Yes, yes. All these words, industry footprint, you know, I'm sure you know. So we just touched upon some of these applications. This is the work I'm showing you. This is what we're doing. Some startups, which I have mentioned, they have sort of used this in different ways. Just to give you a sense of the diversity in terms of the use cases. This is the agriculture we use in computer vision. इसमें डिजीज आईडेंटिफिकेशन है तो एक किसान है अगर वो अपने कैमरा से फोन से फोटो खींच करके सिस्टम को भेज देता है कि ये मेरे इसमें पौधे के अंदर ये बीमारी आ गई है तो बताइए क्या बीमारी और क्या इलाज है ये दे ये कंप्यूटर बेजन के सुविधा नेचुरल इंटरनेट व्हाट कैन ऑफ ये टमेटो लीफ 
का एक पिक्चर है वो बेटू बेटी स्पॉट चलाता है ये जो डिजीज लेते हैं तो डर एआई कैन रिकॉग्नाइज व्हाट डिजीज इट इज एंड प्रैक्टिस इट सेंड यू रिकमेंडेशन किसके लिए क्या इलाज करना है तो ये दिस इज इन दिस इज अ फेली वाइड स्प्रेड यूज केस एंड ऑलरेडी इन इंडिया में भी बहुत काफी कुछ यूज हो रहा है इसका तो इट्स फील्ड स्पेसिफिक टू एक एग्रीकल्चर ये आई यू वी आर सपोर्टिंग अनदर स्टार्टअप इन पुणे व्हिच यूजेस इट फॉर रेडियो रेडियोलॉजी रेडियोग्राफी ये चेस्ट के एक्सरे है और ये इट कैन रिकॉग्नाइज फ्रॉम द एक्सरे कि इसमें क्या हो इसको इस इट कैन डू अ डायग्नोसिस एंड मेक एन मेक अ रिकमेंडेशन बेस्ड ऑन दैट एंड वी रन दिस प्रोग्राम द आसेस वी आर वी आर फेली अवेयर ऑफ हाउ दिस एक्चुअली वर्क्स एंड I can't say it replaces the radiologist, but it assists the radiologist to increase his productivity. Mm -hmm. So it's, we call it AI-assisted uh, sort of radiology. Radiology. So this is another use case. So we 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 have touched upon two applications of computer vision. So let's talk about natural language processing. This case use cases uh, text to speech है. स्पीच टू टेक्स्ट है ट्रांसलेशन है और एक जेनेटिक है जेनेटिक है तो हम सब उसको लाइन में कवर करेंगे एज अ स्पेशल यूज केस बिकॉज दैट टू बिकम द फ्लेवर ऑफ द डेट रेस स्पीच टू टेक्स्ट इज क्वाइट ऑबवियस एंड देयर वाज एनी आप लोग इसके लिए सकते हैं यस सर फॉर मी बोलिंग के ठीक है बट आप इसको YouTube वीडियो बनाते हैं तो ये तो सॉरी हां हां टेक्स्ट टू स्पीच So have you used it? Did you try it? Yeah, I have. Who has used it? I have. Have you used it? So very often because when I travel to Mexico, mm. my counterpart does not understand English, so I have to understand Spanish. Okay. So I speak in English, then it will not automatically. I know. You are already. It's yeah. part of your life in any case. It's not part of your life. But sir, I have noticed one thing. When we want text to text, so it gives. Text to text or text to speech? Text to text. For example, I am typing. Translate the word. Translation. Yes. So I have seen that it gives literal meaning. For example, it 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 doesn't understand the idea. The you know I should say comprehension is not up to the mark. Like I try to teach uh, my child French, teach as if just to help him to understand what exactly is written in the notebook. So when I try it. I of course uh, typed in English and then it came in French. But when we wrote the same answers, kind of copied down in the notebook, there were many errors because the teacher, you know, like uh, told him that this is not how it is written in French. So what I mean to say, it gives literal meaning. It doesn't comprehend. Same I tried in Hindi as well. If you type something in Hindi in English, it doesn't give the exact sentence. It it just you know translates it. Literal translation. So it's improving. It's so, not there as yet. Mm -hmm. It is improving. Mm -hmm. So उसमें आ इसीलिए हम उसको कहते हैं assisted uh, mm -hmm. human in the loop करना mm -hmm. तो भी है क्योंकि जो आधा काम वो कर देगा बाकी yes. थोड़ा उसको polish करने की ज़रूरत आपको पड़ेगा. And uh, I being the teacher, I know subjects minutely. So if I talk about Hindi, any word it's like pahuncha or kahaniya. Many people put only dot. But it's actually Chandrabindu. But because it's widely used as only dot, not Chandrabindu, Google is also like, "Sir, what do you like? Dot is in there." So maybe dot is there. So you won't believe, sir. First three options always come with dot. But which is exact, correct? Eh? Correct option comes at the fourth place. Why? This is what we are. We are also learning from our experience. So that's what we are providing them.
ऑब्वियसली जब अभी तक वीडियो ऐसे बन रहे थे कि जो अपलोड नहीं कर पा रहे थे ऑडियो के लिए वो लेना वो बिना ऑडियो के म्यूजिक के साथ अपने वीडियोस बना रहे थे अब ये मिल गया उनको
this was just a flavor of uh, uh, some of the use cases for or the possible uses of it's up to your imagination how you, how you can and should uh, what we use it here. We talk about the technology just so I if, if it sort of uh, I don't I try to keep it as simple as possible but I beg your pardon in case I it becomes too technical at some time. We just touch upon the basic concept so that you get a little comfort in terms of technology behind the AI. So, artificial intelligence is going to be such a genre, but uh, the real speed picked up after you got this thing called machine learning start coming in, <coughs> which machines which can be trained here. So, I'll, I'll not go into what artificial intelligence or machine learning being the product here, but it's a subset here. Machine learning like subset of it is called deep learning. So deep learning is what is catching uh, I mean the bulk of the attention today. And we'll touch upon just for a minute what deep learning actually means. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning also. And that is the real heart of AI where it comes from. The technology of AI today is sort of built around uh, deep, deep learning today. ये बड़ी चिंतन स्लाइड है और बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग स्लाइड है। इन फैक्ट जस्ट फॉर दिस प्रेजेंटेशन आई हैव टू ऐड द लास्ट थिंग बिकॉज़ व्हेन माय प्रीवियस प्रेजेंटेशन आई हैव मेड इट वो चैट जीपीटी वाज नॉट देयर। चैट जीपीटी इज़ 2023 है। सो डाले ई आई एम शोर यू हर्ड आई एम शोर आपके क्रिएटिव देखो ना ये क्या बात कर रहे हैं आप भी ट्राई करके देख रहे हैं ए आई वेबसाइट चले जाइएगा ओपन ए आई वेबसाइट पे इट्स अ टेक्स्ट टू इमेज कन्वर्टर तो आप कहिए कि आई वांट टू सी मैंने एग्जांपल भी दिया होगा मैं आपको बाद में दिखाऊंगा कैनवा इज यूजिंग टेक्स्ट टू रिलेशन कन्वर्टर कैनवा इज ऑल हां यू what is interesting in this slide is you start Jeffrey Hinton is the one who started deep learning here. ये मैं deep learning की timeline बता रहा हूँ मैं AI timeline नहीं बता रहा मैं AI timeline जिसे और बहुत पहले दिल जाती है। तो Jeffrey Hinton started this concept of deep learning in 1986 in Toronto, Canada. He is a professor at the Toronto University. और जो some of the pioneers of AI were his students. उसको अभी छोड़ देते हैं। यार लीकून वो जिस उस हेड ऑफ एआई इन फेसबुक और मेटा टुडे इस वो जिस स्टूडेंट एंड ही टुक इट टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल ही स्टार्ट विथ समथिंग कॉल्ड बैक बैक प्रोपोगेशन एंड देन यार लीकून सो यार यार लीकून वर्क फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन सम ऑफ द अर्डीस्ट एक्चुअल यूस ये आप देखेंगे ना व्हाट इज इंटरेस्टिंग इज दैट फर्स्ट टेन इयर्स 1986 टू 1998 व्हेन इट बिकॉज़ सार्ट गेटिंग यूज़ फॉर कैरेक्टर रिकॉग्निशन टेन इयर्स इट टॉप फॉर इट टू कम टू अ लेवल ऑफ मैच्योरिटी व्हिच वाज वेरी 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 बेसिक इन एलिमेंट्री एंड देन यू स्टार्ट सीइंग द रैपिडनेस ऑफ द प्रोग्रेस इन 1998 � is quite unbelievable as compared to the so take 10 years to just take off the ground slightly. And then you start seeing how rapidly it is progressing here. Mm -hmm. I'll just touch upon two or three uh, milestones which are important. Uh, have you heard of AlphaGo? Have you heard of DeepMind? So DeepMind is one of the pioneering companies which was taken over by Google uh, in uh, based in London and UK. And they made this program called AlphaGo. A picture and Netflix तो आप सब देखते ही होंगे। Netflix पे आप ढूंढ लीजिएगा AlphaGo के बारे में। It's a fascinating movie है। AlphaGo। हाँ। It's a it's a it's a documentary on AlphaGo. So AlphaGo was the first program which was made by DeepMind, which actually beat the world champ champ champion in Go. Go is like a like a chess program carrying here, it's not chess, it's a little more sophisticated than chess I think. 
तो इट्स इट्स ओरिएंटल गेम इट्स चाइनीज कोरिया इस इस एरिया का वो वो है बोर्ड गेम है एंड हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ गो I have seen one of the Korean shows. They were playing Go. Wonderful. Yeah. So Go is like God here yeah, for 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 that community. And I'm told that ये जो Chinese premier है क्या नाम है उनका? Karan Shi Jinping है. Shi Jinping को जब ये पता चला कि इसने Go के world champion को हरा दिया है, तो उनको वो का इतना क्रेज होता है उस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड के अंदर दे आर दे वॉच दिस वेरी केयरफुली दैट बोर्ड गेम में जैसे हमारे यहाँ क्रिकेट है वहाँ उनके लिए बोर्ड तो वेरी फाउंड दैट दिस देर इज अ एआई थिंग कॉल्ड एआई व्हिच इज बीट द वर्ल्ड चैंपियन इन गो देन ही स्टार्टेड टेकिंग इंटरेस्ट ये चीज तो कुछ काम की लग रही है एंड चाइना स्टार्टेड प्रोग्रेसिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ एआई व्हिच इज टुडे दे आर कॉपीज द कॉपीज द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ रिसर्च पेपर्स इन एआई कंपेयर्ड टू इवन द यूएस so go caught the imagination of oriental in uh, part of the world and this was a breakthrough moment uh, in many ways because uh, this was made by a very small team from the point and uh, i think it was one of the turning point in terms of the, the worldwide spread of ai in terms of acceptance ki ye cheez ek bahut ye jo ibm ne chess ke upar to bahut pehle se kaam kar raha tha but go ka ye para Was more significant than chess. So this was one of the first of its kind. Here. Then the next uh, milestone, obviously, is this Chat GPT-3. Uh, ये जो AI, Open AI GPT-3, which is a very sophisticated language model, uh, which was released in 2020. And uh, this Chat GPT has become the flavor of the day today. But its background, sir, uh, GPT-3 के ऊपर based है. That was two years back. Yeah, they brought it a much better UI. Model कोई बहुत फर्क नहीं है उससे. उसकी training थोड़ी और different है, और उसका use case फर्क है, human interface फर्क है. उसलिए वो इतना इतना आसान हो गया use करना. GPT-3 को use करना ज़्यादा मुश्किल था. तो इतना popular नहीं हो पाया. But uh, that was a big breakthrough. Then they used the GPT for doing the Dali, which is the image to text, which is also very very Interesting. We'll come to that a little later. So, in the last two, three years, the development has been. So, up to two or three years, we have seen it. So, for ten years, last ten years have been very, very spectacular in terms of the growth that has happened. Anyway, so this was a little background about uh, how deep learning has developed over the years. So, what is deep learning? Here? Does anyone have an idea of what is deep learning? So we'll touch upon it conceptually just for a minute. Yeah, I don't want to go into too too much of technical stuff. But AI काम कैसे करता है? किसी how does it interface with the real world? So आप language ले लीजिए, computer vision ले लीजिए. It's all digital today. ठीक है आपका camera जब photo खींचता है, तो सारा digital ही है ना उसके पीछे तो numbers ही हैं सारे. So the first layer is when you convert से आप image ले लीजिए आप, वो pixels में आएगी. पिक्सल्स का आपको पता है कोडिंग कैसे होती है पिक्सल्स के तीन कलर होते हैं आठ बीजी है तीनों को आप एक टू जीरो टू फोर्टी फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव की इंटेंसिटी में आप मैप कर देते हैं तो इट्स 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 अ टू डायमेंशनल मैट्रिक्स है प्राइवेट थ्री डायमेंशनल मैट्रिक्स में आठ बीजी दी इंटेंसिटी ऑफ बीच कलर एंड दी ग्रेड or something equivalent to that, yeah, depending on how uh, how much the resolution of your camera. So, those are numbers, yeah, na. So, the very jo kaam hume karna hai, sare sare chizo ko aapne numbers ko convert karna. So, then what do you do with the number? Or output aap kaise denge? Wo bhi number mein chahiye. Ek baar number aapko mil gaya, to usko aap interpret karne ka tarika aap usme dhoon sakte hain usko. So, it's a real world interface in terms of numbers. Converting your real world stuff into now analog to digital, and then processing it, and then again from digital to analog. Hey, yeah, na. This is the the story behind the entire thing. Now, the question is, how much time is left? What do I do in the middle of the room? So, the whole power of AI is basically in the middle of the room. The output we have seen, the input we have seen. And the hidden layers are. This is where the magic happens. So, what are these 
hidden layer is there. In a, this is called a neural network, isn't it? I, I didn't mention that. It's a neural network. The brain is inspired. It's a human brain. There are you know, billions or trillions of neurons. See, there are many neurons there. You could neuron get there, but neuron is a biological concept. This, mm -hmm. this, this neuron is a mathematical concept. Mm -hmm. yeah, neuron is basically a, is an algorithm or a function. Mm -hmm. function ko aapko train karna padta hai. They say that the human child, when he learns a language or a language, his neurons are getting trained. Mm -hmm. So, it's biological training or mathematical training. Mm -hmm. So, we will not go to the mathematical math mathematics of it. But the whole idea is that there is a whole bunch of neurons out there which are which have to be trained in understanding. The बच्चे को सीखने में कई साल लग जाते हैं। इसी तरह से ये neurons को सिखाना पड़ता है। और वो एक बार सीख गए तो उनको parameter they are called parameters. The neuron के parameters एक बार set हो गए then it can do whatever you have trained it to. So the whole trick behind so they they say कि ये है कि पीछे तीन चीजें हैं। एक तो algorithm है। क्या किस तरीके से आपने अपना नेटवर्क बनाया है जिस नेटवर्क की हम बात कर रहे हैं दूसरा उसकी ट्रेनिंग है और तीसरा उसको कंपटीशन पावर चाहिए जो ट्रेन करते वक्त भी चाहिए और बाद में डिप्लॉय करते वक्त भी चाहिए ये तीन इसके पिलर्स हैं ऑन विच दी एंटायर थिंग रेस्ट है सो आई होप इट गिव यू सेंस ऑफ वेयर दिस थिंग इज मैथमेटिकल कंस्ट्रक्ट एंड द होल मैथ्स बिहाइंड इट इज बीन इवॉल्विंग एंड स्टिल इवॉल्विंग ओवर द लास्ट कपल ऑफ ईयर and this is how it actually looks so what is very interesting this slide basically gives you an idea ki ai has become so specialized today that no one company is following the same approach each of the tech giants have chosen one special domain in which they are specializing and you will see ki ibm ka alag approach hai amazon ka alag hai microsoft ka alag hai apple ka alag hai sab ne apna apna alag bana diya जो फील जैसे डीप पाइन की हमने अल्फा गो की बात करी दे स्पेशलाइज इन री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग ओपन ए आई एज बेट इज लाइफ ऑन ट्रांसफॉर्मर इसी तरह सबका अलग अलग चल रहा है एप्पल का बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग है कि आप भी एप्पल को यूज करते हैं रिलेटेड टू दैट तो यू द कांसेप्ट ऑफ फेडरेटेड लर्निंग है एंड दैट इज वेयर योर चिप कम इन द पिक्चर फेडरेटेड लर्निंग का मतलब ये है कि दे डोंट वांट एंटायर डेटा टू फ्लो बिकॉज़ दे वेरी कॉन्शियस ऑफ प्राइवेसी ऑफ द यूजर So they are not interested in getting the data to their data center and then processing and giving it back to you because they feel it's a breach of privacy. Mm -hmm. So they have tried to build the chip on the phone itself. So their model is downloaded on your uh, on the on the phone and run on the phone itself. Mm -hmm. So it's federal structure. So they say that it's decentralized. Mm -hmm. So they have tried to decentralize their entire. So their whole philosophy and their technology is based on federal. इसी तरह से सबने अपने अलग अलग एरिया उसके लिए जिम बना रखे बट सर आई डोंट नो हाउ कम दीस डेज व्हाटएवर वी सर्च नो ऑन गूगल सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ एड्स और समथिंग यू कैन सी ऑन फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम इवन ऑन आईफोन इवन आई एम श्योर एंड इट्स नॉट हैपनिंग विद मी आई मीन आई हैव स्पोकन टू मेनी पीपल आई हैव रेड ऑन गूगल इटसेल्फ वी रियली डोंट नो हाउ कम इट्स हैपनिंग बट नाउ इट्स हैपनिंग आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी अदर प्लेटफॉर्म Every time it asks, would you like to give permission to the other apps to keep a track on your uh, uh, actions? So I, of course, every time I do know. But still, Facebook and Instagram, these two platforms that search, uh, yes, they track, they track our actions. But still, if the option comes up, would you like to give them permission? And I always click no. Then again, I don't know how many times I'm watching the other apps. No, no, I'm talking about if I search something on Google. If I if I need to go there, who's the one? Okay, but I found this stuff. It's just on Facebook or something. Sir, can I come in? Please. Alpha, Alpha, woman, woman, who has won? The reigning world champion was a Korean. The movie Netflix is all about that. How it beat the human, and he, they were shocked. The that Go community was shocked that a like, machine could beat a human. Yeah, reigning world champion it was. तीन गेम खेले थे उन्होंने मशीन में और उसका उसको चैंपियन ने एंड मशीन आई थिंक वन एंड टू ऑफ देम आई डोंट नो करेक्टली सो इट बीट देम दैट इज व्हाट चेंज द सॉर्ट ऑफ सॉर्ट ऑफ द अनबिलीवेबल कंसर्ट अनबिलीवेबल अदर टाइम द वेरी व्हाट चैंपियन वाज बीटिंग बाय द मशीन 
तो ये है इट्स बिकम अ वेरी वेरी स्पेशलाइज्ड फील्ड ऑलरेडी एंड एवरी ऑल कंपनीज आर फॉलोइंग देयर ओन फिलॉसफी एंड अप्रोच ओके आई थिंक वी आर ऑलमोस्ट इन द एंड ऑफ आवर प्रेजेंटेशन एंड जेनेटिव एआई की हम दो मिनट बात कर लेते हैं सो जेनेटिव एआई इज बेसिकली व्हाई इज इट कॉल्ड जेनेटिव एआई एनीवन गेस Processing in that, 
and then it converts back from that uh, vocabulary to the final output there. So it's yeah. like a kind of a translator which translates human language into machine understanding. Exactly, 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 exactly. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mathematical vocabulary of all the language stuff or whatever you feed into it there. Yeah. Then you process that and then you give it out back in a way which the human can understand. So it's not exactly analog to digital. It's a little more sophisticated than that. Yeah. One form to uh, One form to another. Right. So, wo beech mein sara uska wo neural network hi hai. So, it, when you train the neural network to do machine translation, then the neural network will say that French mein aa raha hai, aur isko mujhe iska English kya banana hai. So, wo take bar train aapne kar diya usko, to wo uska wo us tarah construct bana kar ke, fir aapko output English mein dega. ठीक है, so it's a very oversimplified view of a transformer, but I am hoping that it will give you some flavor of what a transformer means. A transformer को एक picture आती है ना वो robot type का, वो एक image आपके दिमाग में नहीं आएगी। This is a AI transformer, it's a very different, it's a mathematical transformer. तो वो parts हैं robot में क्या करते हैं? Exactly. Okay. So this is an interesting slide again. Chat GPT. Left camera is the parameters of billions, and these are model generative AI के models have been developing over the last couple of years that we saw, and some of the earliest models, which is the Google model called Bird, then there was a model called Mobber, then there was a model called GPT-2, then P5, Turing LLP, and GPT-3, which is the basis for Chat GPT, is the latest one. So these are the number of parameters. So as you can see that the chat GPT-3 is, is about 180 billion parameters. Can you start imagining what 180 billion means here? We'll spend a minute here to discuss and understand the implication of this thing here. So they are predicting the next model which is chat GPT-4 which is under process right now. We'll be crossing a trillion parameters. We start becoming almost as dense as the human brain. Not yet near and near a human brain. I don't remember human brain. Human brain is often trillions of neurons. I don't know how many trillion neurons, but we start coming closer and closer to the human brain in terms of its complexity and size. But in any case, a trillion parameters ka agar ek model mein bana diya. Can you start imagining the complexity and the what is needed in that? What are the first thing that comes to your mind? If I have to train a trillion dollar, trillion parameter model, what is, what is needed in that? Storage. Storage but it is more, it's far more than that. So, trillion parameters stored is not a challenge, but there is a bigger challenge than that. That challenge is the training challenge. So, <coughs> the open AI is a is the company which is working on this. Chat GPT model belongs to OpenAI. Have you heard of OpenAI? Yes. Who heard of it? You have to know it. You have to know it. So OpenAI is, as it means that they are trying to democratize AI. But now it has become a hybrid. It's like a social enterprise. And so they have an open component and they also have a commercial component. Started by Elon Musk and a couple of other people. Some Sam Altman guy recent interview I have watching and that was a rare interview. It was very publicity shy. But if you get a chance, have a look at that. It's very interesting here. The way he is visualizing his company. But they started with a couple of million dollars and then slowly it built up and Microsoft invested a billion dollars later. Now they are investing up ten billion dollars. Major chunk of that money is the kind of compute resources that are required to train this model. So, almost uh, unbelievable sums of money are going into the uh, into training this model. Here. Major part of the budget is actually on training this model. Chat GPT four agar karna and four to they need money in the order of ten billion dollars to be able to train Chat GPT. So the training 
resources are beyond the purview of any normal organizations, even the normal country for that matter. So, What's the name of the person? You said Sam, Sam Altman. So that is where we are. Uh, these models are becoming extremely sophisticated. You could deploy it and you can use it on the open AI. 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 Try it later. Because the number of people have grown in five days, I think, across a million years. So, unbelievable in the history of anything in the in the internet area. So, the deployment, uska at this scale, need the kind of resources that you require in terms of training the models and deploying them is unbelievable. So that is where we are today and we will try and take some examples of uh, how it is actually playing out. So chat GPT, it can, uh, the use cases can be content creation, answering questions and encoding as I mentioned. So you try to create a program. program. So it gives the uh, you say write a Python program for doing this, it will write a Python program. You can copy paste it on your, uh, I'm sure she uses some form of Jupyter notebook. Yes, she or does. She does. does. She does. She does. She you just paste it in a Jupyter notebook and it will run it in your book. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she, her job will become, or trying to create any new program will become very easy for her now. <laughs> Doesn't mean she can forget Python, but. Uh, <laughs> Help for a number. Maybe she can create and she can have the check. Exactly. Okay. So, Dali area, we have talked about it. You have to use it to use it. So, it can create basic images from any natural language description. Use it. So, I'll give you an example. Okay. 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 The interesting thing about chat GPT and stuff like this is generative AI, the general field can be yeah. There are hundreds and hundreds of startups which have started flourishing and have been there in the field for a while. So they started flourishing in terms of making chat GPT in their own way. The most recent example I have just two or three days ago, someone told me that this is a Bhagavad Gita AI. So Krishna will answer your question. That GPT or whatever model they have used behind in the work has been trained on Bhagavad Gita. So, this is a specialized work that you can use almost in any field. So, as an example, all companies have a help, uh, this thing in help their yeah. help board. Yeah. Yeah. Now, help board is pretty dumb. Yeah. 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 What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Whatever things are there, uh, they give a kind of frame. You know, frame, but ultimately, if you talk about uh, details, so we, we have to work on that. Like you mentioned about Python. So, do you think it's okay? So Python coding is there, like Python coding can, I mean we can get coding. So what I need to say, but still even when we get something which is already coded and we have got it, sometimes we have to, you know, add or delete according to our Correct, effect. correct, correct. So it's not 100%? Correct, yes. correct. So the whole idea is that you know, this concept called transfer learning where you have a model which is already there and you train it for being specialized in whatever field. So, you can make a chat bond for dental, medical, radiological. So, you train it specifically on your area and then it starts becoming very good in terms of the area that you train it in. So, you start seeing a lot of specialized stuff like this coming out. Yeah, I think the company said, we train on a start into a chat bond for all the videos in shutdown and then have all the chat bonds. There are all these risks which are there. 
a real risk there. How it will work out, nobody knows right now. You can only guess it. So that is where we are right now. So this is a company in Crayon, which you should try to do it. They made a small version, open source version of uh, the, their own engine for uh, text to image. There is this whole thing about people have started saying that a prompt engineer can answer a new degree. The best command. How do you give it? The specific command to get the same. Exactly. Exactly. So content writers now become not need to become prompt writers. So job description बदल जाए. ये इसमें बना के दिया है. So this is an open source thing, you can see the code, you can do whatever you want with it, you can train it in your own way that you like. This is Dalai Ika, but then on the same prop can you give it to Dalai Ika, which is open AI. It gives you nine options here, and you can choose the option that you like here. So this is a little better in terms of the quality of the output that it gives. Obviously it's a far more powerful thing. But the whole idea is that there are, anybody can do it now. I don't have any idea, I don't have any idea. 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 You can create videos. Google has also released Dreamix. What is the name of Dreamix? Dream, D-R-E-A-M-M-I-X. D-R-E-A-M-I-X. Dreamix. I'm not sure if it's very simple. It is very simple right now, but the model has been released by that. Thank you. You can give it an image. It will try to create a video around that image, or you can give it, I think, text, and it will create an image around that. I will give you around that. I'm sure there are a lot of other music in the boss that I have. All that is going to be creative. Generative AI has just gone out of the roof now. So a lot of uh, creative work through AI, AI art, AI music, AI content writing and whatever else you want to call it. So a lot of things that have to be used. So what will happen to the video editors and graphic designers? I have moved, ma'am. I am also struggling to get a get my head around how it will impact the system. AI is the next thing, so you have to shift to that AI. You should start using it without any doubt. Yet. And the first thing you need to start doing is to use start including chat GPT. So Adani is today very not in favor exactly, but I was fascinated by his statement. He has gone on record and saying that I have become addicted to chat GPT. So somebody like him started using it, that means everyone should start using it. Anyway, these are my coordinates. I love to interact with startups. You are doing so much good work. If I can give you any help, very much I will do it. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, please do that. I am on, you know, good for me as Sudhir 2016. I have to link you to Gaming Bar. So, open for questions and answers, discussion, whatever you like. I don't know how much time we have left. Take things to the day. We have time. 20 to 20 minutes. Okay, so it's an open house. So like we have a movie called Ghar on Netflix. Ghar? Ghar. 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 Sir, so I wanted to know like will there be a time when the robots or the machine learning or the AI takes over humans? I frankly don't think it will happen like that because I think it will end up being a tool in our hands there. Okay. It's up to us how to use it. You can use right. it, you can use it for military purposes, you can use it right. for anything you want. Like any technology is open for use and misuse. Right. You know, it's we have to use it as a human being. But if you think... But I guess sir, we don't do it. We don't do it because at the end of the day, we want everything to be automatic. So, um, whatever. Automation to help us here, not to get 
your face, sir. <laughs> but yes, we, then we get addicted, so... For example, uh, if I talk about house helps, so these days people say that you get everything, every appliance that you need, be it a washing machine or dishwasher, you just name or the, that term. Vacuum mom, cleaner mom and, and all that. Like if you talk about people who live in US and all right. that areas. So they know that they are not going to get any house. So they have to have these. Yes, they have to have these things. So and it has come to India as well. So if I talk about all these households who are, you know, uh, quite proud that they, they are independent. So we are the place. Correct. So there is a word they call it. Just transition, just J-U-S-T, just transition means justice-based transition. Yes, yes. So we need to keep, keep, take everyone along. Na? So we have to take everyone along. 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 So you need to give them an opportunity which is also part of society. Inclusive is a good thing. So we need to make the whole uh, movement towards technology inclusive so that everyone can be benefited from that. Not just a few people. There's an Iranian speaker. Uh, he, he speaks almost every time against AI. Against as in, in these terms only. That yes, we are getting hotel hospitals, hotels, airports for security and all that's absolutely fine. Once AI enters our homes, then then. Uh, Sorry, there on your phone, man. I mean, I mean, I'm, again, I'm talking about actively. Like, if I talk about 20 years back, when we used to get railway tickets and all, chai chai station bills, sir, we did. Sir, we have book kare, we have nothing. Like but now we have in our hands, so now we know. Yeah, chai internet is in use. So actively and passively, I'm talking. About. So for me, AI. AI gives more tension than <laughs> relaxation. <laughs> but it, can, it has to come, so it has come. Yes. No, nothing and no one can stop it. It can't be stopped. It will be perfect. You want to be good, you want to be good, you want to be good, you want to be good. Avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid it. So, sir, it's uh, underscore. So, you are in charge of the world. So, you are in charge of the world.
भी आ सकती है ना
But Rishi Panadi had codified the Sanskrit language in 100, 100 pages, and that code is still standing. So NLP ke pehle, pehle scientist who have Rishi Panadi the. Second one, you can start your own business. Third one is professionalism. Our time is gig economy. Guy, if you don't know, also gig economy. If we have machines, I mean, जो पहले हाथ से काम करते थे, तो machines आई तो फिर खाया कोई किसी का नहीं मतलब ये सब क्या हो जाता है? CPUs and all, watching this AI going to come and what he answer दे रहा है, what he reply कर रहा है, वही कर रहा है। फिर आप क्या हो गए? फिर तो मुझे customer care में बैठे हैं बेचारे, वो तो रह गए हैं ना? हाँ, वो फिर कुछ और करेंगे 
Operational Research Society of India for the year 2007 2008. He was also a member of International Advisory Committee for SSC LUMP LUMS Lahore. Sir is a member of Finance Committee of Triple IT M. Swalio, IPR Committee of Mighty Endowment Fund Committee of IIT Gandhi Nagar and IPR Committee of DST. So has been a vice president of uh, pre president and president of Quality Circle Forum of India, an uh, NGO providing a training for grassroots workers in quality concept. He graduated as a mechanical engineer from IIT Kharagpur in 1969, from where he was also completed MTech in industrial engineering and OR in 1972. He did PhD from the Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland, USA, in operations. Research in 1975, his area interests include operations research, operation management and intellectual property rights and entrepreneurship. So we welcome you and it's a privilege to have you here. Yes, thank you. They are not asking questions. He is not is getting any charm to teach them or to teach them. So it is my request to make an interactive, although there are only nine participants. So that son will say that today I have taught somebody, some people after many years. <laughs> First thing, I don't teach. Yeah, that's why I'm saying after many years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a different subject altogether. <laughs> My son is not teaching that we can have a case study yeah. after this. <laughs> okay, first thing is, uh, that biodata, like biodata, our biodata are some fact and some fiction. Uh, that's the material. Uh, my association as far as incubation and early stage startup is has been around 20-23 years. In IIT Kanpur, we started an incubation center with support from uh, Sydney in year 2000, among the earliest information facility in the country. And I was associated with it from day one. And in the process of my 13 years stay after that, uh, uh, I think I could possibly I interacted with maybe 100 or more startups. Uh, education, uh, in fact, uh, early stage startup in academic environment. Subsequently, in, uh, uh, after retirement, I associated with IIIT Delhi, that is the first institute of information technology in Delhi. And there, uh, they decided to set up a Section 8 company as an inclusion center, and I was the first chairman and director. Continued for a couple of years there. So, and since then also, they continue to invite me as an uh, uh, advisor. Not that I do anything very much. So I've uh, been associated again, okay, interacting with the startups there. Also, we have been under 50, 100 startups I must have done there. So that is, as far as my association with the startup culture in this country is. Uh, of course, uh, now what you, you have, I think I've seen Dr. Arva has sent me the long list of the lectures which you have gone through and I'm sure 90% of it you must have audited it in totality by this time. Uh, it's all right. This is the way. And that's why I say I don't teach anymore because I know that that uh, end of the day it does not matter what I talk about. What matters is what you get out of it. And uh, standing and showing PPT is the worst case, worst kind of such facilitation. Okay. It's a passive learning. Passive learning means things are being pushed in your mind, whether you need it or not. And when you don't need something, it's like, you know, some food is being given to you. You really don't want to eat. Maybe some of it you want to eat. Sometimes you don't know what you want to eat or you don't want to eat. But how much really you can digest it, right? So that's why when he said teaching, I said, no, I know that. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's learning which is important. Okay. And what one can do is to facilitate the learning. Okay. 
and, uh, and definitely this is not the best modality. Interactive experiential learning is the best form of it. If you have a question, it means your mind is thinking. If your mind is thinking, it is demanding. And if that demand is fulfilled, you are satisfied, you are happy, so it makes impact. Okay. And that's why uh, our old sages used to have, actually, I don't know how many of you know it, the older system of Guru Shishya Prabhupada actually is engaged in learning. This Shishya will ask the question, the Guru will answer it. Not that we can do it, it's very expensive and we can't afford it anymore. So we do mass education. This lecture is not an education either. But this is what I have on your own. Uh, so what I decided, you must have heard this innovation and entrepreneurship hundreds of times, right? I am going to repeat it, but we will try to give a different uh, view. My personal view is not an academic view, it is not a research view. It is what I feel about it. And I think in some sense that is the best. So I will try to do this, and am I an innovator, entrepreneur or both? I am putting a question mark, right? What is the question mark? What I am trying to do? Yes, what I am trying to say is that an innovator is not necessarily to be entrepreneur and entrepreneur is not necessarily to be innovator. To be entrepreneur, you need not to be innovator, and to be innovator, by innovator, is not necessarily going to be a of course, it can be both us. Right? And you have to take a position. And if you want to continue the journey, you have to complement something. So this is what the thesis is all about. So first question comes before you talk about the innovator. Who are the innovators? Are First thing is, what is it, your impression? You know, what is innovation? The one who starts giving ideas to a problem, any problem that whatever problem is existing. Okay. That's problem solving, actually. Our problem solving is not innovation. Right? Any particular thing done differently? Yes, to some extent. Okay. Somebody else, this is what I'm saying. This term must have been explained to you 20 times. Anything yeah. yeah. which is created and created with, which is solving a problem or you know, it's like if I wanted to create something, it's an innovation. Okay. Yes, yeah, sometimes and there is not any such kind of problem, but still it comes up. So, you know, that's also kind of innovation. Yeah, see, my, my definition is my purpose. You can think and think. Don't jump. Huh? We can create, we can solve the problem, we can understand. No, 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 those are all applications. We can walk. <laughs> Everybody can walk. Emotions. 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 Thinking. Ability to think. It's not that animals don't have. They do have. Or intelligence, let me put it in. The biggest curse on the nature is the intelligence of human beings. Yes. Right? What is intelligence? Intelligence is ability to come out with something different than what you are doing. observations, how ears, eyes, so on and so forth. You correlate, interrelate and come out from this position is different. Right? For example, how do you make tea? What do you do? Have you ever thought what is tea? Have you ever seen animals drinking tea? Animals who take tea leaves, they eat tea leaves, right? Animals also drink milk, right? 
possibly they are not rash cooker, but they are also possibly in heat uh, ganna. Right? What do you do? You are seen or observed or sensed eating ganna. <coughs> you are sensed or you are observed drinking milk and you have observed Animals also are observing, they are also sensing. No difference. It's okay. What happens if I join them together? That is thinking. Right? So you have observations and you bring them together. And you have curiosity of what happens if you do things differently. Right? Question. So somebody did that. It's innovation. It's a great innovation. He took the heat, I don't know, why did he make a, added milk to it, maybe there is reason for it, maybe uh, tea is little uh, acidic in nature, so you want to neutralize it, so you have milk, or it looks black, if you know, don't want to uh, like that that much, and then it is bitter, so maybe he added the sugar. Right. Came out with it, some drink. Right. That is innovation. Right. Animals can't do that. Why can't they do that? Because they don't have this ability of pool of pulling different kind of information sets. They also see, they observe, they eat, they sense. Sometimes their sensory mechanism is much stronger than ours. Right? It's meant for the dogs, for example, or their birds which you can see from kilometers down. But this assemblage is a illogical process. Illogical means that a part of environment, maybe something happens when this process is start. Right? And human beings in a road in this particular process. So this is what happens as far as the genesis is concerned, that is our intelligence which permits us to look at the different pieces of information together and come out something different. Right? Now this can get reflected in form of a discovery and it can be invention. What is the difference between discovery and invention? Invention is invent, discovery just happens. Huh? Discovery is? Discovery is when it is some, some it already exists. exists Give me an example. See, this is in general uh, advice. It's always best to think in terms of example. So it clearly comes. Yes. And gravity, when we discovered, was already there. Already. Gravity cannot be discovered. So discovery of there is no gravity. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a pull which you can sense, okay. and rest of it is theory, right? Okay. Yeah, but this, uh, and uh, so uh, come back and uh, again give me an example of discovery. So for me, whenever there's a child, the child has a number of talents and all that. If I as a teacher, I'm able to discover that. Okay. So that's for me. Very good example. So for me, that's very good example. Give me another example of discovery. So discovery huh? of America or any country. A, a land which has not been known before. Yeah. yeah. Right. So essentially, what happens? Discoveries are about identifying something which exists but has not been known before, right? So, a tree plant which you may not have seen before and you see it, it is discovery. So discovery implies that it exists. Existence, you are not creating it, you are not developing it, you are not making it, right? Milk, if you are not seeing milk and you find milk is a discovery or the uses of milk is a discovery, right? Because it exists. But making tea is not something which exists. Tea did not exist till somebody brought all these three ingredients together. That makes it invention, right? So discovery is finding something which exists. Invention is Coming out with a product or process which is new, it can be creativity also a similar thing, 
but it is with the intangibles. When we talk about tangibles, means something physical or something which can be executed. On the other hand, intangibles mean it is something which can be appreciated. A music, for example, right? Or a song, or a lyrics, or a poem, or an expression, or a uh, painting. Right? So they are created. Process is same. How do you create a music? How do you create a uh, people may have heard Saragama? Have you ever thought from where this word Saragama has come? Seven clues. And they are universal. It's not that they existed in India or in uh, China or in the right? Because nature was observed. Singing is natural. Birds were chipping. And people could recognize or differentiate between the different wavelengths. And at some point, somebody must have started humming, which is also natural. And somebody said, oh yeah, it sounds good. And it came out. The whole idea of songs, right? So, apart from the vibration, different vibration existed, it's nature. But creating a song out of it is creativity. Then you start joining, bird chipping, uh, bird chipping, bird, uh, 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 I'm going to that So that is how it becomes creative. Again, it is coming out with it, something different. Right? Invention is same thing, but you are talking about now the proper process being developed. Okay, tea, for example. What I'm making tea is a process. So both can be different. Then what is innovation? Innovation definitely are not creativities, right? Yeah. Music or song, or, they are not considered innovations. But basic genesis is the same. Okay. Because the emphasis is product and processes. They are innovations. But what is the difference between innovations and innovation? Which is a utility Actually, I have written there utility. Now, what does utility mean? I will create a connotation of milk, sugar, and and tea leaves, boil it, and come out with something. Question is, is that something useful to the society or is not? Problem is not the issue. Ultimately, at this point in time, the only thing is it useful or is it a waste of my time? Invention can be waste of my time. It's possible that you take cucumber, take uh, tea leaves, and take uh, uh, maybe coriander powder and mix them together, but it is it eatable. You say, what? It doesn't make sense. No, it's invention. It's something new. Especially if you have done some processing, it may not be mentioned, but boiling and other things we have done, we try to out of it, not at that total. Right? So it is not useful. On the other hand, when person who ever started the tea, drank the tea, he may have invited his friends, and the friends came, ah, looks good. It means it has usefulness. Now, usefulness necessarily does not imply that it has a value proposition to the person. So, so if you said at that point, you may have said, Acha iske liye dasan ka jadho ke. Yeah, thank you very much. It's like poems which I said with creativity. Yes, our poems are creative. But if you have to pay to the listeners to listen to you, that is not intellectual property. If the other person is willing to pay to you, it is intellectual property. So usefulness necessarily does not imply a value proposition. It is possible at some point in time people may start paying for it. You don't know. Right? So when we call innovation, we are not really judging them with respect to the viability for creating a value proposition or a value chain in which a transfer can take place. Another point is willing to project. 
So ultimately what happens is that at this stage what one can say this connotation is nice, I like it, my friend may also like it, but none of them is willing to pay. It's useful, it's not useless. So we stop at that particular point as far as evolution is concerned. That's where we were having debate with Dr. Aurora. He was saying commercialization is inbuilt. I said, no, it is possible there may be commercialization. That's how you are saying. Usefulness does imply a possibility of a commerce being created. It may lead to or it may not lead to. It depends on a lot of things. Today it may not be commercializing, it may not be viable. Ten years back, I had it may be competitive. Or it may never be competitive. It depends on circumstances, resources, customers, clients, and so on. So this is the next step of that is innovation. Uh, patent, you have gone through one lecture on patent, do recognize innovations. They don't recognize innovations. <coughs> Utility has to be shown. And for example, the tea which I am talking about, as long as one can claim it's a different drink, potable drink, even it can be drunk, right? It's useful. Because there is somebody saying that yes, it's drink worthwhile. That's all you have to show as far as between the teacher is concerned. Okay, they don't expect you to show any commercial ability. As I said, possibility is what has to be shown. It is possible that it may create a value position, but not necessarily results in value. So a new product of process in super society is the definition. As I said, enablers, human ability to think, sense to interrelate and so on and so on. Who are the biggest innovators? Children. Why are the biggest innovators? Every day in their life they are doing something new. And they enjoy it. So there is a usefulness. Is commercial rivalry? No, you can't say that usefulness. Take maybe children of age group of two or three. Two of them or three of them to put in a room. Very soon they will find a game to play. Always you see them. And what happens? They laugh. It's an innovation. What is the benefit? Laughter, the enjoyment. Right? They are the biggest innovators. Continuously everything is they are doing in to them. Most of the time they do the things because they enjoy the music. And in fact, this is what I say all the time. Innovation comes out of the pleasure which the person has to be moving. He enjoys doing it. Curiosity is part of it. Curiosity is the major driver for this uh, children. In fact, children are also the biggest learner. And before they go to school, up to class 5, all they learn is due to curiosity. It's the question which they have in mind and they learn it. The moment they start going to the school, their ability to think starts coming out. They are taught 1 plus 1 is 2. Why 1 plus 1 is 2 is never answered. And if they ask it, none of the teachers will be able to answer it. Right? Because most of the teachers don't know why 1 plus 1 is 2. Right? But it's a passive. They are forced, just told to memorize. But basically they are not asking for it. So it's a limitation. Of course it has to be done also. But think of languages for example. How does children learn languages? Do they learn it in classroom? All the children in the world learn. And three to five years children can learn four or five languages simultaneously. In some of your families, of course, two or three languages are very common for the children. They know how to separate. They know whom to talk in Hindi, whom to talk in grandparents to talk in the uh, Hindi, native language. They have a separate. 
curiosity drives me. They have this question. All the children will like to sit in front of uh, a bus or a car or a train from the window, right? Other they just want to. Why do they want to go to the window? They want to observe. This thing is new to them, right? And they do it because they enjoy doing it. So they drive it to their learning and enjoyment. They drive. In the classroom, they don't enjoy. It. And that's why the learning that beauty. If you can make it enjoy, uh, fun for them, it's possible they will learn much more. So coming back to that, uh, children are the biggest innovator, and hence you don't need a qualification as innovator. You don't need to do PhD, MS, or uh, high school or whatever degree or college. No, it will mark your innovative abilities. But anybody can innovate. And people have been innovating for 2,000 years when there were no schools. Biggest innovator innovations has taken place when? In the early phases of civilization. Example, stone. And me. How do you think we came? And all the societies, different societies and different cultures have discovered me. Fashionably discovered me in the nature. Right? Somebody, and this is a conjecture, how could it happen? I know it. Somebody may have been sitting and saw some stones rolling.
We don't have that hole where we can put that thread. What is the difference between a needle and a just a thread bar or maybe a nail? Nail has a top, needle has a It changes the usefulness. Right? And it's a new product. Small hole in the bar makes it useful as well as different than the bar. It's innovation. It is patented because it meets all the requirements of the patent. Patented, right? It has not happened before. It's novelty. It's an innovative step, but different than what bar is, and it is useful. Why did he make a hole in a bar? I don't know. Okay, but somebody found that it can be useful. Pushing different things in there so much. Electric bulb cook food. All the examples you see are of that kind. Somebody observed and then converted into a product of process. Cook food is another example. Have you ever seen animals eating cook food? Nobody in the world eats cook food. It's the only human beings which eat cook food. In the process, all the nutrients are killed. It's absolutely hygienic. Right? And that's we are coming back to the emotions. But it pleases our pet. No animal eats because he feels happy about the, or enjoys uh, food. They eat because they want to fill up their belly. Right? We differentiate. We say, Are you both a child? Dosa both a child. That is emotion. That comes out of our process ability to put a value system. What is a chakra? It's a value system. So dosa may be very good in this society, dosa may be very good in our society. <coughs> so dosa khan. Right? So that is again another example of innovation. How did it happen? It's not natural. No animal does it. There's that old story now. We don't know whether it was true or it's true or not. Uh, maybe my story is that somebody was sitting, there was a fire one going on, and we did per drop, and then he was feeling hungry, so when he ate, he found it a little softer. And he then whole food was And he then the whole restaurant chain started from there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, I think. So let us. Uh, Give all these things. So essentially, the point which I have made so far is that innovation is given because of the ability for you to think, <coughs> curiosity, this, the ability to observe, interrelate observations, and uh, do experiments, which are again coming out from thinking. That means that make, mixing three things is experiment, right? If you, not, you do not have any idea. They're going to come out. And by nature, children do experiments all the time. You give them any trauma, do the first thing. They cook it, right? So that is experimenting. Okay. So experimenting and observing, and also logical frameworks, these are the kind of things through which uh, uh, innovations comes out. So end of the story is, and this is what I want to emphasize, is what is the mindset of innovation? Because it's important when you are looking what you want to be, to see whether you have that mindset or not. It's keen observation mindset. The major difference between Newton and others was that he has a keen sense of observation. He was not seeing. There's a difference between seeing and observing. Yes. And he could see it is falling. And then he has curiosity to see. Why it is falling? Right. Combination of these two. Ability to sit beyond what everyone sees. This is what I am saying. Ability to learn to learn it. So when you see something, uh, when we talk about, uh, let's say another example of this, Stephen uh, seeing a uh, teacher. 
quickly going up, which millions of people must have seen. But he observed this emotion and he could relate it with a utility usefulness. Ah, this motion I can use. Not that uh, at that particular point he is saying that it is going to be viable commercial idea. But yes, it is likely to be used. Can be, you know, I can convert something which can move. So, every to relate to me, configure experiments. Obviously, the next step is that you do some experimentation. Only observing this will not create a motion. So, we must have experimented how to convert this into motion, which is engineering essentially, problem solving. And then create logical frameworks. Or another alternative is that you create a set of logical frameworks, such as how it can be useful. Out of the box are intuitive. Most of these things cannot be explained to logic. Why he thought and related, Newton thought about it and related it. Maybe at this distance of a force called gravity. Gravity is not visible. Gravity, force is not visible, right? It's a concept. It explains certain observations. So that's why when you say gravity, I say no. Gravity is essentially some kind of explanation which satisfied a particular observation. Nor is related, unrelated. Now, let us look at entrepreneurship. What is it? An entrepreneur is somebody who senses an opportunity existing somewhere. Of what kind? It can be a true kind. For example, when I, I used to do a lot of train travel and I was and I had to my wife was in IT business so every weekend I travel time. And stations were quite busy and uh, very difficult to find a sitting space. So always I used to think that can I design a carry bag over which I can sit. By the way, it had been done and not only very successful commercially. Right? So there was need which I could sense at that point. Need from, from whom? A customer. So he can sense that these are the kind of things which the customer needs. Can I promote it? It's one kind of opportunity. The another kind of opportunity is he sees, like um, Stephen, seeing that a uh, steam uh, can be used for motion. And then he tried to see whether this motion is going to be required by the customer or going to meet the customer needs. He has, he has not observed the need of the customer to start with. It's not that a statement he was observing the uh, need going up and down. Really was thinking about the requirement of the motion by any customer. But here he observed, and maybe experimentally <coughs> came out with a device or product which can move at that particular stage is invention. And then, if that movement is going to be useful to the society, it is an innovation, which obviously was in some sense. But the next step is that then he also visualized that I can convert this motion, this particular small machine, to need, to meet the need of, let us say, transport of people. That is the point the entrepreneurship journey starts. Right? So, if he did it and commercialized it, he is the entrepreneur into it. Otherwise, somebody else who went to the house of, what is the name of the person? I mean, nobody fits on the person who, Stephen, right? Who saw this. Uh, steam kettle uh, lit going up and down and created a steam engine essentially whatever it is. So it's somebody after experiment he has the device and he called his friends, ah see I have got a new device, very nice. Mm, fun. There's somebody that's oh yeah I can use it 
a little bit of modification actually transform things if we can scale up even a little bit. It's a product and could link it with the possible need of the customers. So yeah, you give me this technology or be my partner and this is what you have to do if you are innovator. Partner is somebody who is entrepreneur. And let us build steam engines and the whole business is started. So both kind of opportunities is what is looking at. The innovator doesn't start with the opportunity necessarily. He sees the opportunity, observes it in terms of converting observations into something. But here a need is being established. That somebody needs it and it can serve a particular purpose. So I said a kind of entrepreneur are those who first observe customer needs and then try to find a product or service which can meet it. Another kind of entrepreneurs are those who see somewhere a product and see that this product can serve certain need which may exist. Right? Both are working propositions. Like NBA Chai Wala. Huh? Like NBA Chai Wala. He started with Chai. So Chai was nothing new for anyone. Yeah. But the way he started, so uh, product already existed, but we found out the product. See, this happens in our domains. Restaurants, for example. All of them are foods. But you have a different set of needs of the customers. So you create a, 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 a particular kind of ambience which makes it different than other restaurants and hence you get more customers. Somebody has opened a uh, restaurant in air, um, uh, a, a, a airplane. Okay. Or you have ice, I don't know how many of you have heard, but they are ice hotels. Yes. Right? Hotels exist. Mm -hmm. But then people who want to do different than going into a uh, brick um, and mortar uh, room, right? Also, he, he, he saw a possibility there. Yes, sir. Hey, this friend, friends must be telling me, yeah, I have a jacket, I see a camera, I see a camera, it doesn't matter. Yeah, why not? This is where the opportunity sensing comes into the picture. Of course, he converted into a commercial position, really run it, and not the thousands of such hotels can be run, but it has limited to the mission. So, so, he sees an opportunity, unfulfilled or possible need, it can be sometimes that yes, people need it, everybody knows it, but people are not organized, able to organize supplies adequately or at wider cost or whatever it is, and that's the opportunity. Can I do it? A lot of these uh, entrepreneurs ventures come by saying, can I do it? So that people can afford it. Because commercial cooperation requires the customer's ability to pay for it. So, on the other hand, usefulness does not require it. So, at that particular point, you are not judging that, whether it is an organized fit. It's the most important thing. I can see opportunity, I see opportunities every day, hundreds of them. Yeah. I may relate it to a product or service also, but what I can't do, I can't organize. How to execute yeah. Right. And that is where the enterprise still comes in. Okay. We understand also in the process of operation what he does is that he to identify the element of the supply chain, understand the value creation. The most important issue is that at the end of the day, the need has to be satisfied at the cost which customer is willing to pay. All of us have all kind of need, right? I want to go to the moon. How do you want to go to the moon? No. No? Where do you want to go? No. Say you are only in India. <laughs> <laughs> so, come back to that. But, I know that I can't afford it. Yes. Let's take the example of BMW or Audi. That's, that's better. Yes, I would like to get one. But right now, not affordable. 
God. But one side is comfort for God. Yeah, but your, what is your basic need? Your basic need is transportation. Yes. Alright? Yes. Now, buying a BMW or Nero is the issue of what we call uh, self image. Yes. Now, both can provide transportation. Right? And our biggest, as I said, uh, disruption is uh, this uh, ego. I am better than you, which is only which I just only in human beings. So point I'm trying to make is that somebody may have recognized the need for transportation, right? and may also have recognized certain production processes by which this can be met. Now what he has to do is to create a value chain proposition so that the customers need of transportation get satisfied at the price which you are willing to pay. You will not go by a taxi paying 100 rupees a kilometer. You will prefer to walk if it is too late. Yeah. Why? If you have no taxi free, mm. right? you will take taxi. Yes. Because for, there is a hierarchy of the needs. Transportation is one, eating food is another, clothes are, then you would like to buy a better uh, design, better design which you can claim to be unique among your friend circle, <laughs> not to spend money on tests. Right? Yes. So there is always a trade off between the needs. So as an entrepreneur, what one has to do is to identify what is the need and what is the value proposition for the customer. Is willing to pay 5 lakh rupees for a car, is willing to pay 10 lakh rupees, is willing to pay 15 lakh rupees. Right? Identification of the customer is working proposition and his ability to pay. And then it's okay. I am looking at the customers who are willing to pay only 5 lakh rupees. Can I create a transportive value for him or her? How do you do that? You look at the whole supply chain and see how much value you are adding at each step of the supply chain and how much it is going to cost. So organizing the supply chain is essentially the issue of creating value to the customer with respect to the cost which he has to bear for the revenue chain. Of course, there may be another opportunity for a group of people who can afford much more. So you have to create value for them. BMW also serves the purpose of transportation. No, no, the only car which I purchased also serves the purpose of transportation because I can create value the cost of position plan. And what is the difference between the two? The ego. My car is bigger, it's 300 horsepower. Where the hell in city of Delhi you can drive at more than 15 km an hour? It doesn't go from second gear to third gear 90% of the time. Right? Accelerate between 0 to 100 km in 10 seconds. You can't accelerate at all. <laughs> By the time you accelerate again, you have to move the brake off. Right? The color. The shape, the size, the aesthetics. Aesthetics. Right? All these are the motive issues. Right? So once your basic needs are satisfied, you pay for your emotive needs. And that is where most of the capturing is done. Right? Say, so, okay, these guys don't want to sit in a nano. Nano is a Janta Ki Gari. Gari. Gari is a Peace Rock. So that everybody says, yeah, oh, acha, he's very rich. All the sub is a big money set away. It doesn't matter. Right? So you create value chain for him. How do you create the value chain? It's not the product, it's the market. 90% of the high value product. Basically, these bags are of you buy, right? They vary from 100 rupees to 100,000 rupees. You must have heard of Gucci's and all those. I've heard some of it, my first I don't know. 
right? All of them are made in the same place, virtually. Cost, maybe then 100 rupees back will cost actually 9,000 rupees, 20 rupees, 10,000 rupees maybe, maybe 500. What will you add in the value? Very fine quality of um, this uh, 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 material. material and so on. Uh, how much it will cost? Remaining 99,500 rupees, what? You can get a mindset. Gucci are for those who are film stars. So they will put a film star, pay 500 rupees, and uh, she will go around showing her new Gucci bag and uh, uh, create aspirations in the mind of this and then you are going around in your friend circle. Oh, I went on the shop and going there. I said, hey, please do cost only $100,000. So, have you bought Let's Start With You One? Huh? <laughs> Let's Start With You One. So, yeah. Karan Johar has been, uh, you know, uh -huh. taken into, uh, I mean, he, he has been boarded. Uh -huh. So, he calls up Pansar, uh, Piyush Pansar. Okay, I have bought, and please tell me, do I need to pay? Pay triple nine dollar. He said, no, not triple nine dollar, only triple nine. He said, please don't say this. This doesn't go with my image. I never buy anything which doesn't come in dollars and all that. Precise. So, so what I'm trying to say is this: that their value is created by market, yes. not in the uh, in production chain. For the nano, the value is created in production chain. Right? Each component, everything has to be. Uh, design in such a fashion that it does not cost very much. Okay. So, where you create value is dependent on the end of the day, what is your customer? And this is the most important thing for you to remember. End of the day, business is not about product. End of the day, business is not about service. End of the day, is what is the value proposition for your customer? Are you having the right kind of value proposition, the right kind of customer? <coughs> if you have a nano and try to sell for that group of people who want a totally differentiated product, you are a failure. Have a BMW and goes to a market where people don't earn 10 lakh rupees or 5 lakh rupees a year, you are a total failure. Who's, whose failure it is? Not of the product. He has not understood this market. Right? This is the most important story as well as the solution is concerned. We will come to that later. What is the time now? Okay. You want to take a break? No, sir. I can sit down and you can ask me some questions. And then I will continue. I can continue all these kind of things for my day. So you have been doing all this for past uh, many, many years. No, but uh, this, uh, this, this, I think these, I have a mindset, can Okay. So, uh, I'll come to this little later, what is needed, this taking hard work expression. But let me finish this. So, align the supply chain, understand value creation, human relations. Ability to work in the team, and customers are human beings, don't forget. So that remains a very important issue that you are dealing with human beings. Human beings do not work on logic. They work on emotions. Are you able to raise their emotions and relate it to the product? That's what marketing strategies are doing right now. See, every time he creates a mindset, he yes. creates a need, yes. which may not exist. But, but, that, yeah, but that happens only when you move away from the basic needs. Yes. Okay. Yes. As I said, that, uh, the need of Gucci, this thing is created by making it a ego position. Different class of class. So, uh, so that is where the marketing becomes very important. But end of the day still, marketing will not lead to a successful product until unless you are able to relate it with the human beings that are going to use it. How you deal with that? Obviously, when a Gucci boy comes, you don't take him in a crowded shop. He feels very uncomfortable about it. Right? You want to be seen. So, you must have seen stores 
We say this kind of thing, you have to do a different idea. Out of 100,000, how does it matter if you spend 10,000 rupees on store details? It's the case where you are not paying. But you are able to relate with the mindset. You come out here, you go to the house, 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 मैडम चाय चाहिए काफी चाहिए क्या चाहिए जैसे जगह उठ के जा रहे हैं हाँ हाँ अच्छा देर करने की कोई बात नहीं जा रहे हैं तो so he is offering tea and coffee to you what is that to do double empathy so this is all part of and you get to get that is with the technology changing continuously the most important part is that you are able to keep up with the changing technologies. So your products are not such, they become invisible very much. Especially in electronics kind of item, you must have seen how much in the life. It used to be 10, 15 years, now it's 5 years. It's not for the day, but that they make it to change, unnecessary changes so that you buy a new product. We create a market. We create a market. But who get the product right? You look at them, used to be Sony, VRS, yes. right? Not very big, big players. Yeah. They are become technologically obsolete. Because technology is rapidly changing, right? Then set, uh, this, uh, set top boxes. Now set top boxes are going to be obsolete very fast. Because now you have this market. Like pages, pages. Right? So, with technologies, these things are changing remarkably fast. Issue is, and this is another, is the, the customer doesn't need a product. He needs a service. He needs a satisfaction of his needs. So you find a different technology which can satisfy the user in the job. Right? So in either you have to be continuously improvising on your product, or your product should be able to upgrade itself to the new technology. If we don't want to be upset. So there are product cycles which are long, there are product cycles which are shorter. So you have to have a very clear understanding of the technologies and technology framework within which your product and your demonstration that you can come out with something different. Not necessarily new. Research is not about innovation or you know, Research is about looking at something in depth and then either explain it or come out in different proposition. Most of the science research is actually looking at the phenomena, processes. Ecology research, they are looking at what is happening, how the uh, environment is changing. Right? You are observing and then maybe you are creating certain theories, some certain ideas by which you can explain it. So some observations need explanation, gravity for example explanation for the observations. So it depends on what kind of research we are doing. So depending on the requirement of the universities, it may take somewhere between 3 years to 10 years or 7 years. I think I'm poor, I can mention. Uh, I've seen most of the people take 5 to 6 years. Okay. Uh, but uh, I did my PhD in 3 years. Maybe my advisor was very nice. He thought that I know what to do, how to do research. I'm sure that when I look at my thesis, I don't feel very happy about it. But possibly, in fact, that I have done something different. What was your work during the PhD? Uh, say, see, uh, my area was operations research. So essentially, we look at algorithms to do different kind of things. So I was looking at algorithms to solve uh, problems of. Uh, Recombination, that means you have arrangement and you want to ch change it in some fashion, how you can do it is not as cost. So, so it, it can be done in three years, depends on it. Sometimes you get your, uh, especially with theoretical research, sometimes you get what you want to get within a very short period of time, which is three years. Sometimes that may not click for years together. More complex the uh, and Ten years. No, no. Most of the universities have fortunately like seven, seven years is the maximum you can get. Most of the universities are accelerated. Accelerated is also six or seven years. Do they see the guidelines? And that one we do is 
And I think they're not thinking very much on fear to give me a chest or something. But why which I'm trying to make is, is the exploration. Experimental research on the sometime requires a lot more time because the experiments require mental selection. Or sometimes with the early experiments, you may be able to actually find what you are looking for. See, higher is the quality of research, higher is the uncertainty. Uncertainty. Because if I know what is to be done, it's not research, it's a project. So what it is for you is the problem you solve the problem, methodology is more or less known, you tinker with it, you experiment with it, and you do it. But if you want to know the beginning of the universe, it's absolutely very little is known. So higher the level of uncertainty is, if you are able to explore it, you will come out with much higher quality research, right? But you don't know whether it exists or not. Because if I know that it exists, then that question was not there. Uh, again, novelty issue. Right. So, not novelty issue. The issue is that if a lot of information is already available about something, then searching the information and analyzing it is easier. But if no information exists, what do you do? Right? So what happens is the highest level of research is of the kind where the questions have very little information about the answer. You may start an election and after, you know, it's, uh, it's like going in a hill. You don't know where the top is. So you start in a direction. And after uh, walking for two days, you come across a lake which you can't cross. So what do you do? You come back, your 10 days are lost. Then you start another renovation. Because there are no maps, there is no Google, nothing is available. So that is the highest kind of exploration. If you have a Google map, it tells me this, but not correctly, then what do you do? Say, you can go there, you can go there, because the map says there is another route like this, maybe that will work. You come back a little bit, then go back. So what happens when you do really higher quality research? It may happen that two, three years you may explore and then say, you are on the wrong path. Right. You come back again. It is possible that in the first time itself you will cross and that is where the difference lies in the quality of research. If it's basically you are talking about a problem, and a lot of information is available, maybe you have to read a lot of journals, collect that information, find out a research question and answer it, it may get done. Okay because something is going to come out of that. But then there are very of research papers that don't know whether anything will come out or not. And there are a lot of such problems we know about. So this is what happened. So research is essentially a function of the university where you go, their expectation, and more than that, your advisor's expectation. In the same university, different advisors have different expectations. Okay. So, some who are taught cruel will not will keep on telling you you are doing nothing. You are absolutely idiot. Okay. I don't want to work with you. But they are also the one who are going to get best out of you. Yes. Okay. Basically, what they are trying to say, or or conquer. Ye to kuch nahi hai. Okay. If you can get it so easily, it is not commendable. Right? There are others who say. If you are part of the university system, university has certain expectations. Okay? Like if a research has to be submitted in a certain level expected. But within that level, there are huge amount of discrepancies in terms of what is the expectation of the advisor and what is the expectation of the student. So that is what it is. So, there is no answer to how long it takes to do research. Uh, PhD. Okay. PhD, although a lot of people don't understand it, is not answering a problem. PhD is to show you are able to look into a problem and go in there, analyze it. Yeah, it's, it's so what we call it is a research training. And if you can 
demonstrate, in fact, my when a student used to work with me, not anymore because I'm directly cruel. Or I did not possibly something also because is when I said that if you have a question which I cannot answer and you can answer, then I'll give it to you. If you come to something with me, come and ask me a question which I know, still you are not ready for it. You have to know more than me as far as your subject is concerned. So that is part of the research training that now you are able to think yourself and say this is the question and this is the right idea. You don't come to me and say, sir, kya 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 If you are asking that, then you are still in, you cannot do independent research. Once I see that you can do research by yourself, you can raise a question and you can find, find a path to explore that question. As well, I'm concerned, the training is over. So everybody has different objectives. So you want to do research now? After all this? I'm doing my research. Okay, good. So now that you go to the... This is you decide for yourself and start your journey. If you have a mental mindset, Partner event So it's not that as an innovator you should not be part of the enterprise, but do realize that you need somebody who can create them. And if you can do both of them, it's fine, but it doesn't happen that long. It can happen, but then it happen. Okay. So this is uh, where is the second presentation project? So then. Huh? So, sir, we need to minimize this and the second. Why is already? How do we minimize it? Sir, I thought so. Not in this. Sir, 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 this entrepreneur. Ah, I just heard you. Frankly speaking, uh, so I don't to bother too much about the job. It just happened that before completing my PhD, that I'm not certified. There were no emails, there was nothing. I sent my two days uh, absolutely rubbish yes. my data to some institute in IITs. And after three months, I received the appointment. And I was so shocked because in India at that time, until you apply with the IPO and other, nobody will entertain. They offered me appointments saying that you are going to be appointed as soon as you finish your PhD. I am not completed my PhD. So I decided this is the best thing, best institute. I then went to But depending on the area in which you are, if you are in sciences, you need to do PhDs. They are not sufficient only to demonstrate that you can do research. You have also to do research subsequently and show that yes, your successful research. So in science, generally it is a practice to have a year for a period of three years. My daughter is been for seven years now because uh, she is working with uh, She is in human gen and she is in oncology, genetics, cancer genetics. And right now where is she? She is in USA. She, she is working with the Saint Children Hospital. And as I said, the lab and the mental expectations are too high. So whatever is done is not satisfactory. So I said, so it's an interesting kind of thing to do this. But I guess sometimes this is how we take out best of the purpose. Right. Sometimes it looks cruel. Sometimes you are, we are, it's not that we are not. But some, the, what happens is, if somebody asks them, I want my student to do better than me. It's the greatest pleasure in life to see a student do better than me. Okay? then you know your training is successful. So, some people do force, so still your best comes out. So, a lot of time this ability to take pressure and keep on doing things, even when you are not very uh, successful, actually helps a lot in developing yourself. That's why. If you are able to do things easily, Actually, you don't learn, in some sense, how to 
create the difficult pass. So that's what happens. So now this, uh, I call this uh, entrepreneurial journey, it's a high risk, high reward journey. All of you know, some of you are in finance, you know that there is a relationship between the risk and reward. Right? What is the risk? Can anyone define the risk? This is my idea which I am going to begin with. So, no. Chance of failure yes. and bad decisions. Yes. Risk is essentially is the a measure of uncertainty. Yes. yes. Trying to attend my pain, my in the, in the gambling parlance, risk is assessment of how likely you are to be successful. Now what happens is, in any environment, you deal with the future. How businesses deal with the future, correct? Future implies that what we call environment. Environment doesn't mean physical environment. Your competitors, your regulations, your custom, eh, things will change and you cannot control a lot of these things. Right? So there is a lot of uncertainty. So uncertainty is something which you cannot visualize in advance. For example, tomorrow whether you will see sun or not. Sun will rise, that's not an issue, that is no. Seeing the sun is a different issue. You may keep on sleeping, right? So you may not see the sun. Or it may be cloudy, or God forbid you may die. Right? Now here, of course, if these are your actions which are under your control. Right? To some extent you can control. But can you control clouds? Sleeping you can control. Reduce, reduce the uncertainty. Right? Death you cannot control. <laughs> right? And cloud you cannot control. So what happens is that the environment consists of a lot of things over which you may not have any control. So what you can do at most is that you can make a probabilistic assessment. It's summer month. It's my name kaha cloud hotel. So chances are very high. So you are putting a measure on the uncertainty. So this is a measure of uncertainty. Right? Now, as I said, of course some risks are which you can be controlled. They are not really risks, they are your inefficiencies. Right? If you want to see sun and you don't put alarm, that's inefficient. That can also have the same outcome as uh, uh, cloud. Right? So, so what happens is that risk is a measure of uncertainty. Now what happens when an entrepreneur, because an entrepreneur is getting into something different, something new. It's not a well search for. If already sufficient amount of examples are there, it's a business. Okay. So if you want to open a tea shop, which is like any other tea shop, you have a lot of information available. It is possible that opportunities in a particular area but tea shops are existing in other areas also, you can talk to them, find out what is the cost structure, um, what kind of customers are coming out, then look at your areas, find out what kind of customers, and then make projections. Uncertainty is there, but relatively less. Right? But if you are going into a market with a different product or a new product, you do not have much idea about your customers and their need, you are exploring. That's what the entrepreneurship is all about. The journey starts with very little information. So it is a high risk. But then it is also a high reward. So either you may fall down or you may go up. That is the major difference between a small business and an entrepreneur. See, small businesses exist. In India has 5 crore small businesses. Grocery store wala. He is also doing the business, right? Sabchi wala. He is doing business. In some sense, he is entrepreneur. But the primary difference why we don't call him entrepreneur is because he is working in a more certain environment. Right? Of course, things will still can go bad for him. Right? Still, he 
you have to compete there. But information sets are available. You can make assessment probabilities. You not sit on a computer and make it, but mind they do it. They know it. Why did this subject I mean? आपको पता है कि मंगल के दिन भगवान जी का वो होता है तो ये ज़्यादा बिकता है ज़्यादा खरीद के लाए ऐसा नहीं कि सब कुछ है कुछ बल्कि ज़्यादा इंटेंस तरह से सो दिस इज़ व्हाट इट इज़ एंड दिस डिफरेंशिएटेड फ्रॉम नॉर्मल बिज़नेसेस दैट यू आर ट्रेनिंग इन ए एरिया ऑफ आइस अनसर्टेनिटी and with this question comes as the chance of failure is high. What should I, what I should do to avoid failures? So essentially, risk assessment is what I am talking about. Failure are part of success. That is the standard saying as far as uh, entrepreneurship is concerned. Entrepreneurship is failed once or twice. And a successful entrepreneur, that should not dispute. Where failure does not mean you are wrong. See, you can be right only if you know exactly what is going to happen. Otherwise, you make assessment, and assessment need not be right all the time. If, if it is right all the time, it is not assessment. It is not a prediction. It's knowledge. It's a, so, so because you have failed in one adventure, it does not imply you are failing in another. Possibly you did not assess the risk properly or were too optimistic about things going your way and did not build risk reductions to it. So as far as risk are concerned, again you must have done somewhere, I am sure in 50 lectures, you may have covered it somewhere else. But this is my view of looking at things. The risk are cash flow risk. And this is the biggest risk which early stage you have in uh, have. I'll come to that in the movie here. And then the market customer related risk. I already talked about it. Identifying which is the your customer group is the most important aspect of any information. And a lot of failures take place because what you are having is not meeting the need of the customer and which you are looking for. You are not looking at the right customer. Okay. And matching the two is the most important thing for the successful customer. And as I said, the value proposition is the value for the cost proposition. It's not the product features. So whether the group which you are looking at has the ability to pay for satisfying the need what you have is the important question. And this is possibly uh, another major reason why yes, that you are not able to approach your customers or understand. Product figure risk is another one. Uh, basically, it means that uh, product failure risk is another one. It means that you have conceived a product, but actually, product does not succeed because it doesn't meet the requirements. Or there can be issues, other issues out there. Competition related risk because you have not understood the competition properly. Revelation related risk, sudden enterprise, revelation for the, the, the uh, latest example is the cryptocurrency. Okay. Two years, there were no revelations. So a lot of people were making a lot of money and suddenly revelation came and everything is going haywire. A lot of successful enterprises are going down the drain. Uh, and team related risk is another risk for the early stage startups. Because you have a small team. Okay, you have a team of promoters, or you have a team of promoters and uh, some employees. And until unless there is a harmony among the team, it is not going to work. So when you select the team, be careful about whether the objective of the person and your objective are aligned with the objective of enterprise. Everybody has aspirations. So meeting the aspiration of your group along with the aspiration of enterprise will take place, then it is a successful team. And falling on the team can create huge amount of 
choose because somebody may know about technology, finding the person to know technology may become extremely difficult for somebody may be market savvy or no market savvy. You cannot hire people, you don't have that kind of money. You are working on pictures. So having like minded, and like minded is not being similar to Thinking can be different. Objectivities. At the end of the day, align. This is what is the best for organization, and both of or all of us are looking for the best for organization. So that is the thing. Uh, now I'll maybe uh, make 10 minutes time on cash flow risk because this is what I consider as the, one of the biggest is other than the market. What exactly is the cash flow? What is the meaning of that? <laughs> Basically, cash flow is a statement which, for a specified period, like month to month, for six months or at least, you should know exactly how much is the money needed and how much the money you are going to have. Salaries, materials, utilities, payments, right. With reasonable certainty. Now, there is no way of exactly computing what you need. Okay. And if you are optimistic, if you think things will go your way, you may run out of cash. So, the cash flow risk should also have the security? I will come to that. So, essentially, what happens is that when you are looking at it, running out of cash for operation is one of the major things. So, if at some point in time you do not have money at all, what do you do? You can't move forward. Right? Or you will have to seek money at a very high rate. Somebody may be saying, okay, give me a 50% share and take 500 rupees. Right? So if you want to run the business, you have to do that. At least six months you should have sufficient coin. This is my this is not a it's not a rule. Every business will have different requirements, but you should have a reasonable amount of money for a reasonable period of time. What it means is that if you are running less on cash, start reducing your expenses. Okay. And for next six months, next slide will be what are the sources? How do you get the money first? At early stage, that means once you set up, let us say, an enterprise in an incubation center, from where the money is going to come from running the business. It is self investment, the money which you have, which is your own, the family and friends who have trust in you and will give you money not because they are going to get a return, because they, they want to help you. Parents, for example. Sometimes they say, Achha, think, Achha, I think that's why it's called the things and it's Achha, I mean. And third is the seed funds which you get from the uh, different government agencies. Please remember our business. So, essentially, seed funds is provided generally by government through incubation centers. And that's one of the reasons why people should incubate. It provides an ecosystem, that's one of the reasons. There are other people like you, and you can discuss and it provides some facilities which we cost you less. Second is that most of the time, after some time, six months or a year, some small amount of money will be available from the government funds. So there are different government agencies. I think this particular education center already has three of the same funds. Recently, they have got one from the same grant. Yeah. So they will give you the 500 rupees or 700 rupees. In some cases, they will take a small part of your equity, maybe two or three percent. It's not a value replaced uh, system, it will always a uh, system that will give you 500 rupees and our standard rate is three percent of equity or one percent or two percent, depending on the given center. Some of them give grants also, depending on the proposition you get from the government. This fund is related to the cheapest source of fund as far as you are concerned, with very less conditions attached. 
most of them also permit you that the money once you are successful or converted to equity if you are not successful. No, all kind of position. Basic idea here is that early stage investors do have a serious money problem. Even if you have two, three people or you yourself are working, you need certain amount of cash flow. I mean, there are charges for the incubation, utilities, computing, material and all that. And money, even if you are not taking any money out at all. At early stage, the promoters don't take money out of the it's their money which they are putting in no point taking it out. It doesn't make sense, right? So this is what happens is if some kind of funding comes when there is some visibility with respect to the revenue streams. India especially it's very difficult to get so-called angel funding, angel funding, without only on the basis of technology validation. Even if you have a product which you can show works, which is an innovation, right? It's a product which is useful. They are not willing to trust it. Why they are not willing to trust it? You say, are you market me where now? Who will buy it? Right? Right? Now try whether there is somebody willing to pay for it. Okay. See, initially what happened when you do free trial, you do free of cost. So a lot of people say, Bada chai. Right? It's like that poem business, you know. Chai hai, bada chai hai, chai hai, bada chai hai. Put it up, it's a lot of fun. You can buy it, you can buy it, you can buy it. You can buy it. That is the question. But if this is some visibility, for example, you have got some paying customers. Still you are not making any profit, you will not make profit for a very long time. But if they see some visibility in the revenue stream, what, they, what it establishes is that at least you have identified the right kind of customers. You know that these are the customers who are buy, willing to buy your product and are willing to pay for it. You may give discount, doesn't matter, you a discounted price, nobody wants to pay work, pay and fees. it is or he feels that it's worth it. Free, everybody will be standing in the line. So what they visualize is that yes, at certain price, whenever the central funding or early stage funding comes, it is at a very low valuation in the area. They are taking the risk. They still don't know whether they will make profit or not. So it may happen. Generally, I have not seen too much of an angel funding coming in. The early inclusion stages like one year, two years, maybe three years, possibly the third year. Some depends on case to case. As I said, if you can demonstrate some revenue stream, chances are of getting some revenue. But don't, don't think, don't start a business on the basis that you get it. First two years, it is all rather early stage for you. Third year onward, if you don't get it, either wind it up. Or you get funding. If you have sufficient amount of your funding, continue. You have three choices. But first two years definitely don't expect much money to flow. Otherwise, seek funding, which is five to seven dollars. And then, of course, uh, once this happens, uh, if more revenue, the third is the revenue stream visibility. That is when so-called venture funds comes into the picture. They are large investors. This is you must have what somebody must have told you stage A, stage B, stage C. Yes, yes. Right? It comes only when there is reasonable visibility of the revenue stream. It's issue of growth. Whether you will be able to grow, you will be able to ramp up, or you will not be able to ramp up. You can't even chance for that. Because having 1,000 customers, I have 1,000 customers are different things. And difference may be because you need more advertising, marketing. This generally at this stage is the marketing game. You have some product which is acceptable, product is done. So money will get into this. And when you see all these advertisements from the new startups, they are burning their venture company. You have got everybody doing everything free, right? Uh, I was having a discussion with Arvodaji uh, about 10 minutes delivery. Who wants 10 minutes delivery? The moment you say 50 rupees, is it, are you going to pay for it? No. Very, in fact, uh, for even a mircha, you'll order it. Right? So they, they will show what they should. Oh, 
hundred thousand subscriptions in a month. Are all those subscriptions are free? The moment you say twenty rupees, ninety percent of people will turn off, and you say fifty rupees, ninety-nine point nine percent people will turn off. But that money is that that is a promotion. It it actually gives visibility to the customers, and if your product is good, the freebies will ultimately get converted into if it is a good product and free promotion. But value for customer doesn't get just by it. Value of customer gets just only by paying customers. And until as you have paying customers, you cannot put in how the insights will be put. So these are the stages of sources of money. And then of course stability phase, once you grow to some size, these venture funds will be called by Jomoto and now investor will come, lose their money, promoters will be happy and new investors will be unhappy. This is the story of most of the startups nowadays. But basically, stability phase means that now you have reached the size and you move from enterprise to business. Sorry, from entrepreneur to enterprise. So it's now a business which level of uncertainty in terms of the product, in terms of the customer, has come down. So there is a reasonable stability about the product. Product will keep on modifying, that's not the issue. But you know that this product meets the needs of the customer, they are paying customers, and it is possible if you have right, right kind of volume and production facilities to make money. There is still guarantee that you make money. You know that companies like Amazon have made money only in the last few years. They were not making money for the last 15 years from their existence. Oh, Amazon is started to look at the yes. And you can look at the UK, India they are not very much yet. Look at the normal money. That's why Walmart bought them because Walmart can sustain it for 15 years without any money being made. That's why strategy also at times even they put it in chapter 11 because they have to pay. No, chapter 11 comes in, none of these goes to chapter 11 route. Like Amazon USA is continuing and the share prices are moving up because they have to show growth. Okay. But because money is being poured in growth, they are not able to show surpluses. It's not that everybody buys from Amazon. Walmart, yeah. Walmart is, uh, yeah, they are not going to put Flipkart, it is a 16 million exhibition. They are not going to buy it. And Flipkart is going to make money. But they know that it will take a long period before growth phase uh, stabilizes. Okay. Only recently, uh, Amazon, I think, have made money. Amazon US I am talking about. Very recently, in three, four years. Okay. Or Zomato, for example, uh, is not going to make money for another five years, at least. I, I think they still have their positions. So that's all right. But the investors which come at this stage know that. Okay. And they are willing to take that risk because it's part of their investment cycle. Okay. These are large investors. Only, and they wait for 15, 20 years. And this is the stage when you go out, so you become, most of these startups, uh, when acquisition phase takes place, the promoters become chief technological officer. If it is a product, innovative product, but they will become chief operating officer if it is something like Flipkart. I think Flipkart, so I was ultimately left them, I think both of them, but one of them was employee of the world, the chief competitive officer. So this is the journey of entrepreneurship and an enterprise starts. That's what happens. And enterprise is just totally different model. Now these are the expenses. Somebody was asking. We have fixed asset which is implant and implement. Uh, for the most of you, there will not be much of expenses and there is just a question of the but it's still there to be expenses. Operational expenses will consist of manpower, space and utilities, and communication and IT, materials, regulatory expenses and taxes and maintenance. Now a lot of time people don't recognize regulatory expenses uh, and suddenly they may find that this large amount of money has to be paid because uh, regulation requires that. It depends on the industry. But one should be very conscious about 
what kind of expenses can come into the picture. Now, when you are making cash flow, that is the important issue which I am trying to say. You have to make predictions. Right? Now, when you make predictions, there are two ways of looking at everything. Whether the cup is half full or half empty. Half full means what? Basically, one view is optimistic view, another is pessimistic view. So, when you say half empty, as if you are being negative, when you say half full, you are being positive because you are having full. So, invariably, you, a prudent sheet will try to make expenses in a pessimistic fashion, which means you will like to make a little higher salary expenses than what you have. That's my, this is back to your question now, that is what provides you the question. Okay. Our alternative is, always make two lines. One line is, what you think is going to be, and another line is the worst case scenario. The material cost may go up by 10 percent, 15 percent, right? Space costs are likely to change, so both the lines can be seen. So the Not in everything, depending on the item to it. Like material cost, depending on the maybe five percent because you have to give fill up, or maybe you may not give depending on the right. So basically, you should be able to estimate your expenses. Both which are likely to take place and both which may take place under certain circumstances. Because if you know exactly the worst case scenario, you can be ready to provide the question immediately. If it comes suddenly that you got an order for 30 um, items, but by the time you go to the market, you find the material price is 15 rupees more or 15 percent more, you may not have sufficient money to escape the order. Right? So anticipating that when I took the order, it is not a question of profit sale, it is a question of survival. Survival, yes, absolutely. Yeah. In my case, I have three companies and it's worth it. So, for me, I have always touched. Yeah, of course. Always. So, whenever I have orders and I know. See, in your case, if you have choice to quote, at a later time, fine, but you do not have it most of the time. Buyer will say, give me a fixed price, I don't care at what cost you buy the material. Now, if your execution period is six months, even in case of profit, until it's the class built in, that the price will be dependent on the current price on the day of delivery, you may go up and down. Right? So, at time of quotation, at least you have to know what is going to be the cotton price during that period or alternatively you have to procure cotton on the day of purchase. It's the same thing like we, we are costing at uh, US dollar at rupees 80, maybe it is 82, 83. 5 percent fluctuation at least you should keep in mind, right? Other, the reason why I am saying is that in early stages you are starving for the fund. You may get order and you don't have 1 lakh rupees now because the material cost difference or whatever difference has come up. What do you do? Now, if you have availability of the money from self or friends, there are only two sources which can give you the money at short notice. In investors will not give you the money at short notice. Because your starting startup will not have money in the market. No. Nobody will be entertained. Absolutely not. Bank will not entertain you. Nobody will entertain you. And, and also, even if they are entertaining you, the cycle is wrong. Nobody will give you money overnight. Right? So that is where your, uh, your estimate should be pessimistic with respect to uh, uh, your expenses. It means at least certain amount of cushion is there. 
At least you know that you may need that kind of money. So you may talk with some people and say, Wait, that's a thing that you have to do for a thing. If you have to do it, you will get a lot of commission. And generally, this is also a great experiment with these kind of things. But the important issue is to anticipate it. Not let a crisis happen. And then you try and running around and you are not able to find such. And again, I will tell you. There are everything delays, you know, or you, even if your service base or your product base, you cycle delays. So you have to think. So when you, you know, giving your service at the speed, then you are not. Not only this, if you are not able to execute your order in time, there are a lot of people who will not place order. Likewise, we say, it's always in our case to say it's easy to get order, but it is very difficult to sustain a buyer. Because you need, this is what I'm saying, that you don't have time. Right? Keep some way, many more material as I can order supply. So be very careful about this particular issue, especially if you are in early stages. In early stages, you can raise the working capital on the order from the bank. Okay? When your enterprise bank will give you working capital based on the orders. But at this stage, generally no bank will travel. Unless you are willing to mortgage your house and take your mortgage, personal loan and other stuff, then you can carry it and carry it. No issue. If you are ready to do that. So this is what I am saying that be careful about this cash flow. Make projections, not with an optimistic mind. Make projections with a pessimistic mind. Sell is for revenue. Do not think that money will come where it was promised. Okay. Now, once you get experience, you know that this customer is going to deliver 10 days, one month, it's not. But in the initial stages, you have new customer, you cannot make them unhappy. You cannot pressurize them to make payments. You cannot say that I will not supply you order until you release 90% uh, of payment or 100% of payment. They are in commanding position. Right. So we also understood the charge-wise. What is that? Charge wise. Charge wise as in like, you know, we send the shipment, it's not up to the bar, buy a post charge after. So that also we gather that this might come. Precisely. So any expense, this will be pessimistic. Things that will go wrong and what exactly can happen. Of course, there is a limit to being pessimist. No, otherwise you will close the business yourself. <laughs> so make a reasonable assessment of it, but never be very optimistic about money being received and money being spent. And uh, Arology also will not give you additional money um, in a month's time. Even if you have money to give you a seed fund, it will take three months, it will take four months, it will take six months, and you may ask all kind of question. And that is the easiest money to get, by the way. Yes. Okay. There is no, no better money, no easier money than the seed funds. But even seed funds, I know, there are all kind of delays which take place. Government grant, like, sanction letter has come, the government has not sent the money. Okay. Uh, so, so this journey, and this is the most important part, the first two years, first three years of your journey are the most critical part. If you sustain for three years, it's likely you may not become a big, but you may continue 5 crore turn on, 10 crore kind of turn over making maybe 50 lakh, 60 lakh, 70 lakh rupees margins. Pretty good, it's not very high. So don't aspire to be recall from day one. Aspire to be sustainable for me. The first objective is can I sustain myself for three years? Can I get a revenue stream? Can I get customers which are paying customers? If these three things meet, chances are that you will be able to continue. So the day you have the customer satisfaction, that means you are there. At least now you are, it's going to be up and down. But you are sustainable. And what happens after three years when you start having revenue cash flows and visibility of revenue is the investor also come. The moment you understand that, see they are coming for them, it's a high rate of return. You know, venture capitalists pay 40 to 50 percent per annum uh, on successful ventures. Of course, out of four, you know, one or two will not. So the ventures which are successful make return to them which are very high. It's always, uh, Big names, uh, of course, they lose money also very heavily. Uh, right. But overall, they make money. Right? And the reason is that in growth phase, 
the variation goes up substantially. And it's after three years, your growth phase will start. If you are successful and you are able to grow well, then you will enterprise. So this is the important part. Then marketing related, and these are the underestimated costs most of the time. People are when they're costing, they take into account material cost, manpower cost, and so on and so forth. What they do not take into account are the distribution and marketing costs. Now, even if you have a small client of this, the distribution and marketing costs exist. And you have to take that into account when you are preparing. Distribution cost is depends how are you going to reach the customer. You have product at your shop. Customer is somewhere else, right? The distribution will be more supply. Now it depends on the various distribution channels. Yeah. yeah, for example, you may have direct shipping. Right? That is shipping the distribution cost or the shipment cost. Maybe inventory is cost and so on and so forth. You may have to uh, another channel. So you may send it to another channel, from another channel you can go to your, right? You know, for example, you may sell it through Amazon.com, right? So you, or you may sell it through Flipkart. Now when you sell it through Amazon, Amazon will charge you something, right? They, they will have agreement with you, all kind of things which you have to agree with them. You have to pay their cost. If they provide replacement, for example. So that will be chargeable, it will increase the cost. So you have to have very clear idea about that, Pricing, what kind of distribution channels are going to use and what is going to be the real cost for me? Okay. Marketing cost is that how do you reach the customer? And that's the most expensive. Now that depends. Initial stages, generally you may be reaching more by word and mouth and by reference. Okay. Advertising you cannot do because you don't have money to do advertising. Okay. Or you may do some low cost advertising like putting mirrors in the newspapers. Some putting some posters, participating some events, even those are expensive, right? So, but the moment you start growing, you reach a phase where you are able to show to investors that there is a visible customer line, which can be approached now because they are able to demonstrate that they are willing to pay. They come into and big advertising takes place at that point. So generally the big advertising will take place only when the venture capitalist comes to the picture. And he gives you 10 crore, 20 crore, 30 crore rupees budget, primarily for marketing. But till you reach that stage, advertising is a very, very expensive thing. Never plan to reach the market on expense uh, until uh, advertising until unless you have substantial. Low cost marketing, as I said, is possible. Now, internet marketing and other sources will become cheap. I think somebody must have talked to you over digital marketing. Yes. So, it is possible to approach targeted customer at a relatively low price. So, you have to be very, very selective with respect to your marketing channels. So that you don't get into the wrong channel, spend money there, and you don't get the customer. You cannot afford it. You don't have to. That money comes only when somebody else gives you the money. Then you can advertise which are come, give 20 crores to you, whether you get the customer or not, in not your body, and other day somebody will try it, and it's going to fall on you, money will be cash. So this is, and then financial cost. Always keep in mind that money which you are investing has a cost attached to it. It may be direct or indirect. Especially if you are running your Profit and loss balance sheet, not actual, but really to look at it where you stand. You should add those costs also which you have not incurred, but should have incurred if it was a regular business. For example, your, your time cost. As a promoter, initially you may not be charging anything, right? But actually, your time is worth 15 lakh rupees a year at least. Not booking, because this is not the actual balance sheet, but it will give you some idea where you stand. And at some point in time, when you want to target an investor, you can say this is the cost. 
It's not that I have spent only 10 lakh rupees. I also in got two years of time, four of us have got, that is 60 lakh rupees per person. 2.5 crore is our human power investment. 60 lakh rupees is our personal investment. So we have invested over 3 crore rupees. So if you want to bring 5 crore rupees, we will give you 30% share. Because this is what it is. It's not 10 lakh rupees we are talking about. 20 lakh rupees is a direct expense, right? And projections now will take into account this cost. You say this is, if I get 100,000 customers, this is my revenue and this is going to be the actual cost. Not the cost which I incurred in the first three years. That's not the actual cost of enterprise. That's no actual cost when you are to grown to a size. Right? And then you will be able to show that this is the way surplus will be generated. So it's a very careful plan strategy to keep track of the cost which you should have incurred but have not incurred because you are indirectly contributing it. There is space cost 5,000 rupees, in commercial place it costs 15,000 rupees a month. Right? Utilities you are using, services of your parents you are using, all those things will cost. Right? So that is the real cost. That will come only handy at the stage once you move really from this early stage to the next stage. But then those costs will actually be incurred. You cannot start work, continue to work from home and not incur those cost of stop or don't charge at all for yourself. How long can you continue to support yourself without buying service? Okay. So that is this I clear first case. Make sure that in first case you can sustain yourself on funds under your control. That is the most important. Sustenance is the first requirement. Somehow or other you have to come. As I said, you reach in third year time. If you are able to sustain yourself, something will happen. You will maybe get an angel investment or your revenue stream is sufficient itself to create or whatever it is. But if you are not able to sustain yourself for this period of time, <coughs> Chances are, we said thank you very much and take the job. What is the time? Huh? Okay, I think we are This hour we need to talk about the Yeah, and please, please feel free to use these slides as, as you want. I don't claim any interest for the right. And sorry, I have to close up but my time is over. And I think I have to get text. It should be coming. Okay, thank you very much. If you can back your phone on. It is your enterprise. Other person who are giving advice are not taking any risk. You are the one who is taking the risk. Don't trust because Ashok Mittal who has given you advice is the right advice. Think of it. Assimilate it. And after assimilate it, if your mind says this is the way to move, move there. Nobody can take responsibility of your actions. It is only you who will succeed because you want to succeed. Advice is free. Sometimes it's paid also. Both are equivalent. But such advice is for you. No, no. <laughs> I, I, my basic principle, I tell anybody who take my advice. I'll give you advice. It's up to you what you do with it. I will never ask you what you have done with my advice. Because the person who takes the decisions has to take the responsibility. I don't take the responsibility. If I have to suffer the risk, I may not give the same advice to yes, you. Absolutely. <laughs> I may think twice. Success story, it depends on someone's success story. Yeah, so this is what it is.